does it it is it, how deep is it well, it's not deep. it's not a stitch you're fine super glue you're fine it it's bleeding though the okay. guy's erect penis just hit you in the eye you don't it's need bleeding. to do it's not bleeding it's it's like wet you bleed too easy number 1 number 2 I would be more bothered that a dude's erect penis hit my face. I've been drinking all day. It's Crun, crun, get it. I'm not touching you, dude. Yeah, a Just penis has touched that hold face. It, hold up no, the lid. I I'm think not it's touching swelling it. up. I think it's swelling up. There's no way. Oh my god. I'm like the hunchback of of Paris or something. I told God. you I told you when we got in oh. there, you just got to start punching him right Cron. in the dick, dude. I didn't swing. Somebody tripped me and... Cron, I don't think your dick. eye... I don't think your eye is as black as you think it is, so give Dan the steak. And... This is... This is my steak from home. I'm not okay. giving it away. You can you still bring have a steak it, in You here? can have it back. Because it's steak day for me, dude. You're taking <laughs> keto way too serious. I'm only doing steaks. And you are, you are supposed to cook them, by the way. No, you're, you're not. You're allowed to cook them on keto. Fucking some, liver king, dude. I think it's some weird ooze coming out of here or something. We're eating raw now, baby. Okay. Fuck. That, did you call the cops? I don't call the cops, no. Well, there's a fucking cop car outside, and the cop is walking well, through the door. one of the fucking oh, porn guys probably did. Okay. Be fucking oh, fuck. cool. Here he comes. All right, we got a code four. Stand by. All right, what seems to be uh, going on here? I got a call about some kind of a fracas here at the rental shop. Well, hello do to you too, sir. Jesus do I need Christ! To stand up. I'm sitting in a chair. Do I need to stand up? No, he's not the president. Oh, okay. You can stay seated. All right. I'm saluting. You're holding the steak up. Yeah. <laughs> it's in my hand still, dude. Nobody's getting my steak. Nothing it's not happened. an issue here, sir, sir. Sir, we're fine. Everything's been taken care of. We're, we we do not want to f- file a report or anything. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your service. We back the blue. Is that, what? Does that man need medical attention? No, he's fine. No. it's It was just a dick. Uh, just, they, as he said, it was a dick, but I don't think it was. I think it was a finger. Can, well, actually, can you? are you allowed with the state to, like, can you uh, put him in an institute? Like, do you have that power still? This isn't about me. It's about f- the situation. Can you fifty-one no. fifty him? Well, that's a hundred and one. What are you talking? What? Nothing's going on. It's just a few dudes eating some raw steaks together. All one right? guy eating a steak. One guy got a penis to the face. We threw the perpetrators out, sir. Finger. Thank you. Finger. That's a big finger. So you guys don't want to press any charges or anything? Well, no. I do. If it was a dick. Okay. Can I press, you, a, can I press the, charge against a dick? These two are trying to take my stakes, so I would like to press dude, charges cares about that. About your That's fucking stakes, Kron. Steph, dude. By the way, how did you? Aff- that, you fucking stole that from your parents, dude. Uh, you can't shut, afford steak. Shut the fuck up, dude. There's a your cop dad's, right there. Your dad's probably looking for that fucking steak, right? Now. He's shut probably starving. Up. I'll give you a fourth of the steak if you shut up. All right, dude. All right. Okay, well, you guys got the stakes worked out. Uh, did you want to press charges against these these folks? What exactly happened here? I, I just came in swinging. Somebody tripped me. In a yeah, I, in the eye. Dan. Well, Dan, you went in second. Kron, you were in there first. What happened? I just started punching dudes in the dick. You that. said two. You said a guy was arguing back there, and I went in and punched him in the dick. They they broke in though. No, they're normal. No, they're cuss. They're normal guys. Yeah, they came in Door- their entrance. Doors unlocked, man. Yeah. Okay, I, so sounds I like tape a nickel to me. over the fire escape door, and they just come in that way. I I can't sign anything. Okay, just I'm just putting that up front, sir. Noted. Well, he just puts an. He can't read. He he can mark an X. I can. I can. I can read. I can we shouldn't, read. We shouldn't press charges, though, right? Because those guys are like, that's like 90% of the business we do here. Yeah. Uh. You got a canine in there? I think the problem is that Kron, or Dan's bleeding. I don't, I think it's, I think it's like a ooze or something. I don't know what yeah. it is. 
But it, yeah, it, I'm just. I want to get that checked out, son. Who called the cops though? I don't. I don't need an ambulance, sir. Don't call an ambulance. So I'm, I'm guessing that, that maybe Bill Cron, you might have fucked up one of their balls or something. Like if they called the cops, well, I hit them pretty so hard, dude. We might want to preemptively press charges. They were all hard. <laughs> And if it you felt that through your finger. brass knuckles, that's impressive. I think we're okay, sir. I think we've wasted your time enough. We've worked out the stakes. I'm going to let Dan go home. Hey, sir, I uh, just wanted to say, I think uh, the big wall, a couple blocks down, uh, arms running. Just just, just saying. I want to look into that. Little I'm kid arms, to- not like guns. Like they got mm-hmm. a bunch of like, kid parts human yeah. trafficking that seems to be like a big thing lately i don't oh boy yeah, yeah. They put, check that out yeah, go, sh- go ship they, it down they ship the kids in parts and then put them together at the and destination meth. it's like pretty lucrative and they they make them walk around with bolts in their necks for some reason they got a little kid frankenstein's over there dude now he's not gonna shut the fuck he's not gonna Jesus fucking christ what did i walk up, into dan A cop is definitely going to investigate little kid Frankenstein's walking around at a video rental store, dude. He probably thinks we're high as fuck right now. I Which... am high as fuck right now. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. This dude. cop's been eyeing the puppet section ever since he got in here. Sir, uh, if you rent, do a rental, we'll give you a free Kit Kat. Uh, you guys have anything uh, by uh, a gentleman named Girth Brooks back there in that corner with the red cover on the door when the lightning strikes by all means sir i see you like to rodeo sir go ahead this week on five day rentals we're going to the roadhouse Welcome to Five Day Rentals, the video store podcast. My name is Bones, and this is the climactic conclusion to dance category, Teen Heartthrobs. And I am here to set balance to the force. Dan, you brought us John Travolta's, well, more importantly, Fred Durst, the fanatic, Cron Howard. You brought us Jamie Lee Curtis and another big rig with road games. And I'm taking us to 1989's Roadhouse. It's about time this fucking thing was on the show, but we're not doing it alone. From waxing the porpoise, G-Baby, what's up? Yo, how's it going, guys? Appreciate you guys having me on. Thanks for being here. I, uh, I'm, I'm no longer waiting to introduce Cron and Dan because they always take a good 30 seconds after I introduce them to come up with some witty retort. <laughs> so people know they're here. Just say hi. I quit. Then quit. Cool. G baby, waxing the porpoise. What's going on over there? Oh, you know, it's just uh, another middle aged white dude wanting to talk about movies. Um, yeah, it's me. Me and my uh, my good buddy Steve uh, started a couple years ago. We we had the idea kicking around to uh, just review movies because he's he's really a, a film neophyte. And uh, I'm a big movie buff, so I thought that that would kind of be a a fun juxtaposition and make him watch all the shit I thought he'd been missing out on all these years. Um, And then occasionally we'll kind of sprinkle in off topic. We'll do a little potpourri, as it were, uh, with like kind of my conspiracy side. We kind of look into like unexplained stuff or true crime or... Um, I mean, we've even had some, some fun episodes with just people we know that have wild stories that we thought would be cool to talk about. So it's kind of a hodgepodge, but primarily, uh, we just review movies trying to like deep cuts, like what you guys do. I mean, like I've, some of your back catalog catalog puts us to shame. I'm like, fuck dude, these guys are really 
mining for gold here, but uh, just stuff that hasn't been covered to death, you know. Uh, I know that's one hell of an elevator pitch, but if that if any of that does anything for you, check us out on the internet, wherever. That was a solid pitch, dude. <laughs> Anytime Shit. I guest on a show, it's like I have two hours to <laughs> prepare for this, and I fuck it up. So, <laughs> what is the uh, what's the current hit rate with Steve? What are you, what's your percentage meter at? Uh, I can't remember what it was. I think it dipped a little bit. I think we're hovering around the eighty-seven percent approval rate mark, which I'm that's still pretty, pretty high. That's good. I'm pretty that's pleased nice. with. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I didn't think it would be that high, <laughs> to be honest. So yeah, it's a it's a win. I will never invite myself on a show, but I uh, believe in the Manhunter episode. He has never seen Last Action Hero. Yep. And if you need somebody to come to bat. Word. If we don't Duly walk away, noted. if we don't walk away with, you know, another percentage point. I think the problem is with Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a sleeper Steve hit. Honestly, I think he will dig that. I mean, we got the Arnold factor going for us on that one, but. Yeah. What in- was what was uh, the miss that hurt you the most? Probably Blade Runner, but I should have seen it coming. I just thought I hoped against hope on it, but yeah, he fucking... But the the thing about that one that really drove me nuts was his obsession with fucking the amount of rain that was going on in 2019 LA. I'm like, it's a dystopian future, man. That's your fucking issue. Like, come on. But yeah, that that one kind of cut me deep, but... Fully synthetic androids, totally fine with. Raining, bullshit. Can't yeah, it's, it. it's got to stop at some point. <laughs> Can't rain all the time. Has he hey, seen... Hey, you're not far off, Steve. <laughs> has he seen 2049? Do you know? I don't think he has yet, but I... Okay. Better Blade Runner. I yeah. think he would like that. I'm in, the, I'm in the camp that I, uh, I prefer 2049. I saw it... I mean, I'm a purist, but... I saw 2049 in the theater and it was a fucking experience. So I won't come out and say it, but I, I, I liked watching it more for sure. Right on. It, it's a hell of a fucking film that v- yeah. Villeneuve's fucking, I've kind of come on to him in the last couple of years. And I really fucking dig his shit. Like we covered prisoners and I still have yet to see incendies, which I hear is a fucking real ball blaster. So yeah, I, I, I really dig Villeneuve. Enemy fucked me up for about a week. That's another weird one I haven't seen either. I've been meaning to. It looks good. Yeah. You uh you know, you get out of watching Looper and then two or three days later you watch Enemy. <laughs> Fucks you up. <laughs> Off pod joke. Uh well, G Baby, thanks for coming up. on, man. You've been a good supporter of the show ever since you found us. I think uh we got a mutual friend in Mount Molehill. Yep. Uh hey, Chris. No, no offense to you, but uh putting us all to shame. Um <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Waxing the Porpoise gives me entertainment every week. I'll say that. I like listening to it. I think you're doing a great job. Appreciate it. So thanks, G-Baby. You're welcome back anytime on Five Day Rentals. And have you gotten (laughs) uh, an actual hard bottom wastebasket? Are you still rocking that wire? I I still got the wire mesh, but it's it's lined. So Okay. Smart. Throw a target bag in there, buddy. Yeah, we learn my, and we get better. Lord, my Malort days are over, so I think I should be in the clear. The only other <laughs> thing that does that to me is tequila, and I've I swore off that demon long ago. Everybody should, I think. Yeah. I'm back. I'm back on it. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, you were yeah. doing tequila the other night. Fuck. Uh, Last time I did tequila, I rolled a fucking bowling ball through my cul-de-sac. <laughs> And then my wife's What'd sister you... ran out of nowhere, like full speed. And I was like, holy shit, I never seen her run. Did you get a strike at least? <laughs> yeah, <did> you... <laughs> there's no pins, bro. And then I fell down. It was a rocking chair. I tried to hold the back. It was oh, it was bad. Should have lined up some trash cans. Mm-hmm. Wendy's chicken nuggets saved my fucking life that next day. <laughs> got and they, we got it. She went to Wendy's and got they gave her an extra like four piece and she set it on the guy was downstairs. Nobody even came to check on me and my family. I was like, I could be, I, I could be dead down here. And she just laid it on the table and was like, 
here, we got an extra. If you can eat it, I don't think you can. I was like, I really I forget. <laughs> and then about one o'clock, it was like, and then you just feel life like come back into you. I was like, oh my God, thank you. Fucking Evanescence started banging, bringing your ass. <laughs> But yeah, that's the last time I did tequila, and I ain't touched that shit since, bro. Ugh. Yeah, that's brutal. Bowling league, well, fuck yeah. <laughs> it's moderation, You guys man. had the, had the uh, pleasure of enjoying Malort before? Familiar? I've never tried it. I, I mean, I'm aware of what it is and its reputation, but I've never... They sell it out here, and I see it, and I'm like, nah, I don't think so. It's pretty brutal. I mean, it tastes really bad, right? Yeah. It tastes it's, like... Yeah, I don't, it tastes like driftwood and fucking, like, death. I don't know, man. It cool. seems like the appeal is, like, try this terrible drink. Yeah, I think that's what... It's kind of like... It's just stunt. It's a stunt booze, I think, really. Just to... Or to try to just... Throw your throw your shit on the table against someone, you know, like who can endure. Are we more. the Malort of movie podcasts? Yeah. It might not be a bad title though. You know I I like Malort for the the chip on its shoulder it has, so if we're That's looking us? at it through that lens, then I say yes. You think we have a chip on our shoulder? Cause we in got good, two. In a good way. <laughs> All right, we got to get into Roadhouse. Dan, last year was your first time watching. February of last year was the first time that I watched Roadhouse. Yes. Did you give a rewatch this week? Uh, I gave two. Badass. Two rewatches. Kron, you watched this probably in pieces 50 times across TBS growing up? Yeah, I will say, I mean, I know I watched this within the last two or three years all the way through. But before that, it probably was like a 30 minute chunk here, but then it'd be on the next day. So I could pick up another hour then, you know, Yeah. but it's so much better with the boobs, right? Oh yeah. I mean the, the uncensored version is the way to go. Well, that's my thing. I always, like I said, I seen this on TV and thought it was like a PG 13, like movie from the eighties. And then I seen something on Twitter that like had tits in it. And I was like, Roadhouse? What? That's like a PG-13 movie. Was it boobs in it? And I was like, oh, shit, I got to watch Roadhouse. And I was what like, is this, Titanic? Oh, <laughs> all right. I was like, I've been missing out all these fucking years. Gee, baby. What's uh, your history with uh, Dalton? I guess kind of similar to Kron, I... I mean, it had it was up there with like Top Gun and like Field of Dreams and shit that had a TNT a superstation quota, so it was always kind of on. And uh, I, I've seen it probably a handful of times, like in my adult life. But I don't think I ever. We'll get to it, but I don't think I ever finished like the last act because I thought the last act was when he fights that dude uh, on the fucking in front of the pond there. So this I I watched it twice. Uh, to go to to really get into it, and uh, yeah, I was kind of floored by the the actual ending. But um, yeah, this is always this is just an awesome fucking action Swayze flick vehicle that's just fucking undeniably dope. I'm glad I'm super stoked to talk about it for sure. Hell yeah! And uh, Dan pointed out this week. So if you want a real podcast. Uh, talking about this movie go ahead and shut this off and tr- flip on uh, the rewatchables because the week of this record they just dropped that i'm guessing coinciding with the uh, release of the jake gyllenhaal amazon streamer which i think Anybody might be coming it? out the week that this comes out Is no, he playing, it, com- comes he out plays, the 21st he plays dalton yeah, I don't know if that's his character's name. It might be, but yeah, he is. He is the cooler. I thought it came out Friday, and I looked, and I was like, oh, I guess not. Well, I thought so too, which is why I ended up watching a Smashville, uh, spoiler alert, movie last night. 
Maybe oh, we'll just talk, maybe we'll talk about that later. Just real quick, uh, when I watched it this time around, I got to a part in this movie and I was like, "Holy shit, Keith David is in this movie!" Yeah. I was like, "I don't even remember him being in this. I wonder what he does." And it turns out basically nothing. Not a goddamn thing. <laughs> Pours a cup of coffee. That's yeah. his entire. Why'd they get him? He he does alert them they're running out of whiskey. Yeah. And he does it with gravitas. Yeah. That was just the, like, I don't know. I did not remember that he was in this movie. I didn't was either, some very surprised to see him pop up. I saw it in the, in the opening credits. I saw it. I was like, no shit, he's in this. Like, and then, yeah, he just comes and goes like nothing. Mm-hmm. Anything Thanks. in the research, Dan? Was, he, was his part trimmed? or I he could have shit about Keith. He could have punched somebody in that big fucking... Uh, I was trying to brawl. think, did he, I think he kind of like walks out as it's going on, so, but I didn't see him fighting, I don't think. I don't think so. Yeah, because he would, yeah, he's there by the time Jimmy does his three-on-one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it turned, and we get that second brawl. Okay. Guys, rate my fucking letterboxed. Bones, Roadhouse, 1989. 5.0. Five point I'm going to agree with Dan. I think this is Bones' version of me bringing Tombstone onto the podcast. Uh, 5.0. Just Oh, so I'm just total disregard for the rules, G-Baby? Yeah, I guess I got to go with the link, man. It seems like it's going to be pretty strong. I got to go 5.2. Hmm. Okay. I guess we'll see. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Might have went down. Who knows? You guys ready to get into this? Hell yeah, dude. Double Deuce is calling our name. Word. G-Baby, you know how this works. You've listened. The only thing you're not allowed to do is say, if I were doing the notes, I would have said this. (laughs) I have actual notes written down for this one. Okay. Oh, that's the first time. I write them for my movies. (laughs) Because I got to do the plot. Sure. I'm fucking sure, dude. MGM United Artists, directed by Rowdy Harrington. You guys want me to do the lion? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the new MGM? Yeah, dude. It like flips it's on like you. Three D. And... Yeah. I was like, oh shit! Look at this. I think it looks like shit. Yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, give me the fucking lion back. Yeah, just do. It worked for a fucking decade. Just keep it. I think about that line. I'm like, Alfred Hitchcock directed that. I'm like, he just had the recorded the line. It wasn't. There's no art to that. Like, fuck you, Alfred Hitchcock. He had to get a ring around his head. <laughs> no, that that was done in post, bro. The yeah, fucked but up for- thing is, uh, Hitchcock's wife was telling him to kill the lion too. She mm-hmm. was like, what? kill him off. After the first he, roar, people won't expect was, it. He was whipping it, right? I don't uh, think Hitchcock had the ability to move his arms. That's true. <laughs> he just stayed egg shaped his whole life. Yeah. He's born that way. <laughs> I think his hands literally came out of his like ribs. I don't know if he had <laughs> shoulders and elbows. I think he was a penguin. Yeah. He'd be the ultimate penguin. And you know what I'm gonna do next? <laughs> I'm gonna show the toilet. <laughs> I'm gonna show the WC. Uh, X rated G baby. I'm going to pimp, uh, your bad influence episode because in that discussion, you guys were talking about one of my favorites and I forgot his name. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Tip Jesus. of my tongue. Jesus well, Christ. I got, I got to first uh, give credit to old Chris. Cause he, I had no, I, I was not aware of that film and he, he brought that to the fore for us. So, okay. Which I was pleasantly surprised by, but I, I did like it. Um, James Spader, you brought up uh, Jack's back. Oh yeah, Rowdy same director. Harrington. Yes, sir. Yeah. And this beautiful piece of American cinema is also shot by Dean Cundey. Hell yeah! Fuck Hell yeah, yeah, dude. We open up. There, there's a dinosaur movie that he did later on. A little movie called Jurassic Park. He also did a bunch of Carpenter stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Before Carpenter couldn't afford him anymore. 
But I think he did the thing and how like are the the early did, good ones. He did the fog. Fog's fucking awesome cinematography. We open at the bandstand club. Bands rock and don't throw stones. We follow Frank Tillman as he enters the club. He starts eyeing all the action. Loving them. All this cash. Fancy, classy people just spending their hard-earned money. He spots our star, Patrick Swayze. Swayze's getting pulled into an altercation between two hot shots and some bouncers. Now, one of these hot shots... He's getting he's held back by two bouncers, but he says, I think it's time for or uh I think I can take you. I've always wanted to try you. Dalton says, uh, outside. We think we're gonna get our first little beat down here. But Dalton and the dudes uh throw these guys out of the bar and then they just turn around and go back inside. That's how you what subvert you know, expectations. <laughs> A real bait and switch, dude. Yeah. Now, during this altercation, Swayze did get a slice on his shoulder, so he's upstairs, and he's giving some stitches to himself, and Tillman walks in. Swayze's like, I don't know you. He's like, my name's Frank Tillman. I got a little club outside of Kansas City called the Double Deuce. Just came into a little bit of peace, or a little bit of money, and I'd like to make something of myself. You guys think it would have been cooler if he would have did the, like gunpowder like lighted on fire to he saves that for black dog dude <laughs> i mean it would have been cooler but it seems like this guy's been sewing himself up for a while it's kind of his thing did you guys ever sew yourselves up i could i could do it i would try oh, i'm gonna cut you next week <laughs> first thing dude Bring a needle and some thread, baby. <laughs> oh, that's on you, bro. I think I'd rather staple myself. Oof. You got to have a specific kind of thread. I thought you did this all the time. I said I could. I didn't say I'd do it, but I could do it. <laughs> I think you're supposed to use human hair. Okay. Didn't, uh, didn't like a lot of the hardcore Germans, didn't they shove like horse hair into their scars to make them look more predominant? Well, like, wasn't that the trick? Like they suddenly grew 13 inches of hair out of their (laughs) forearm. I don't know. Look that shit up one time. I think that's probably some (laughs) random Instagram feed, like tidbit that I've come across. Better use my pubes, not my hair on my head, then. All right, Tillman goes on about the double deuce, says it used to be a sweet deal. Now it's the kind of place where they sweep up the eyeballs after close. Great line. They should have shown it. Just some guy guy pushing a broom. (laughs) Got four or five eyeballs out in front of him. I pictured it in my mind's eye, just a fucking push broom, Mm -hmm. sliding a few eyeballs across the floor. You don't think you collect those at the end of the night? You don't? Keep like a jar. Right yeah, you put them in that bar. jar and people can eat them, dude, for yeah. like 20 bucks. Pickled right eyeballs. The, the purple fucking eggs. Mm-hmm. All right. He wants the best cooler in the business so he can get the double deuce back to its previous glory. Maybe even better. Dalton says Wade Garrett's the best. Wade Garrett's getting old. He's still the best. I want you. Now, there's some. Under no underlying or subtle is uh, too soft a word. There's some homosexuality in this movie. Mm-hmm. What? It's a lot of dudes wanting dudes talking about how uh, amazing other dudes are. Yes, it's just it's not cruising. This is Roadhouse, dudes. Yes, but I don't think there's anything <laughs> wrong with that. I think not that there's anything wrong with whatever. I'm just saying. It's a good thing. I think it adds to. I don't. You can't I guess I picked up on that. Dudes don't do this anymore, you know? Dudes don't call each other just randomly and ask how things are going. People don't hug. I hug you guys every time I see you. <laughs> What's that say about you? 
I mean, it is a. I'll get it. Okay. When I look, uh, it is 89. And I'm like, eh, okay, I could see that in like 84, 83. I just want to get it out there because I feel like it's a thing now where it will probably have its seasonal run where people say, Roadhouse, man, this movie is gay, right? Or Top Gun, is, this movie is gay. I do think there's an argument to the the Top Gun subtlety. Yeah. I Roadhouse, mean, I, not so much. I think with a lot of action, though, like you could read as much of that into a movie as you want to. Anytime there's like, you know, eight dudes on a mission together, like you could easily kind of draw uh, a line from point A to point B, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Some's a little bit more overt than others, but yeah. I mean, you could say that about Navy SEALs or fuck a lot of shit. But I mean, this one, they kind of really nail it on the head, you know, at the end when it's like, I used to fuck guys like you in prison. Like it's pretty on the nose, but. Mm -hmm. Dalton says it's 5,000 up front and I want 500 a night and you pay all medical expenses. He's going to run the show. And when the job is done, he leaves. Frank pulls it up. I added it up and this guy's like, depending on how many days he takes off, he's, He's pulling down like 130, 150 a year. Dude, that's crazy. I did the same fucking thing because I'm an idiot. And I was like, all right, 5K up front, blah, blah, blah. And then, so I I got it down to back of the napkin math, 62.50 an hour in 1989 is fucking balling. So that comes up to 72K roughly, which is like 183K in today's money. I was also betting on eight days of work a month, weekends. So if he's working more, he's fucking making some oh, yeah. cheese. I just did like 500 times. I, I think I took a month off, but I had him working like seven days a week. So yeah, okay. if it's weekends only, then it would be, <laughs> you know, substantially less. I'm glad I wasn't the only one that felt the need to do that. <laughs> That's awesome. I think we had a segment. When we we do first the math. started called, yeah, we did the math or something. Yeah. That's pretty, that's a good one. I like that. Maybe I had him working five days a week. I'm not sure. I did some adjustments, but I definitely had him working more than two nights a week. Well, Thursday night's ladies night. I think, I think you got to throw Thursday in there. I think you could split yeah. the difference and do three. Yeah. He's working Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. But the big thing is probably making like ninety to one hundred and ten. Then, <laughs> but medical expenses is the is the thing now that I'm like, oh, that's fucking incredible. Yeah, especially for how much this fucker's getting hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Frank uh, lets him know that he's got a plane ticket ready for him, and Dalton says, "I don't fly. Too dangerous." Dalton tells Oscar, his now previous employer, that he's moving on. This guy's fucking pissed. Right before Frank leaves, he says, you know, I thought you'd be bigger. We see Dalton give away his... Uh, so hit. so this is just a world, like, there are sci-fi things where it's a dystopian world that's just slightly different. Like, everybody, uh, the only thing that matters is what your score is on the Bengal app or some shit. Like... <laughs> This is basically a dystopian where everybody knows uh, who bouncers are. I was thinking that later when he hits up uh, Sam Elliott and he's like, you ever heard of this guy? It's like, why would he know of that guy? You know, but it makes it, it does make it seem like there's this world of connected bouncers. Like, yeah, he's the best. And like, he's like, I want you. Like, I was thinking even, that like this is even the like bar patrons are like, I want to fight Dalton. I know yeah. who Dalton is. <laughs> In You're research, like, it says that this movie changed the way bars did things. Like, because they seen this movie and they were like, oh shit, like, maybe we need a team of security, basically. Dude, that's funny because I, like I said, I, I'm from Chico originally, which is a big party school. And I had, I had quite a few buddies that were bouncers at one time or another without fail. All of them. I mean, I mean, it's not hard to see, but they all, this is all their favorite movie. Like 
hands down. Every one of them, it's it's almost like it's a ritual. Like you, they make you, they fucking sit you down like Clockwork Orange style, and make you fucking watch it or something. But yeah, I could totally see. Like, I mean, some of the tenets that he's laying down are are pretty sound. Yeah, and I mean, this is you know before the internet, so. I don't think it's that crazy to believe that there's a myth around some people that sort of gets spread. You know, one one bouncer used to work in this state. Now he works at this state and he's just shooting the shit. He's like, you know, I heard this one time that there was this guy who fucking ripped the guy's throat out. You know? Yeah, I guess. But I mean, I couldn't name you a bouncer right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what it, I'm not going to give out what your line of work is, but, you know, there's. There's potential for people in that that are... He's a bouncer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. And I'll punch dudes in the dick. I'll punch you right in the boner, dude. Do not fuck with me. How many bouncers have you seen in life, though? I feel like like I haven't seen that many. They're incognito, man. But that's a door guy. That's not like... I don't know. We're also not the type to go to these types of places. And also, I think these types of places sort of fell out in the After 90s. Us. Yeah. And right. now they want them back. Dalton goes and uncovers a pretty sweet Benz. But before he does that, we see him drive his old beater up and he throws the key to some guy sitting on the street. What I look like oh. a valet. Yeah, that guy's voice is wild. <laughs> It rules, dude. Yep, and he's just like, it's yours, man. It's kind of a Seinfeld reference of the week. It's the beast. The Can't get rid of the car smell, so he yep. gives the car mm-hmm. away. I think he leaves it unlocked, and a homeless guy gets in it and then yeah. freaks out at the end of that yeah. episode. <laughs> what I look like a valet. I don't want to step on research or cut you guys off, but do, you get, do any of you guys recognize that dude? No. I did not. Weird science. I haven't seen that. Is that never the seen club weird science? I've never seen that. Is it the club that. scene? Yeah, when Gary and Wyatt they get all drunk with Kelly LeBrock, and then they end up going into the city, and they go mm-hmm. to that like jazz club, and oh, that shit, dude he's right. there. His name's Fats. Anthony Michael Hall's like, "Yo, Fats, let me." After they get all drunk and stuff, like, dude. and he's talking like him and shit. Yeah, or but at first though, they go and they hand him the bottle, and they're all like you know, teenagers that have never drank, you know, and he hands him the bottle. He's like, I don't know. I got to go home. And he's all, just drink it. <laughs> he's got that voice is so like, I'd never forget it. Anyway, sorry. No, I saw perfect. that. I was like, dude, with the Wolfman Jack voice, he's fucking, that's weird science. That's fats. That's what we love here. G baby. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> Jasper, just outside of Kansas city. Dalton shows up to the double deuce. He gets shit from some bikers about not driving Detroit muscle. (laughs) Dalton recognizes the band playing behind Chicken Wire. He watches multiple fights. Bouncers not doing their jobs. They're drinking and flirting. He posts up at the bar and he watches one employee start dealing fucking drugs. See this blonde lady. She orders a drink from the bar. uh, Takes in the sight that is Dalton. Some, uh... Townie is pretty drunk at the bar, hits on the chick, asks if they can get nipple to nipple. She says, I can do that alone. Does she mean she can push her <laughs> nipples of together? Of course we were going to ask about this. Yes. Duh. That's what I thought. How else is she doing it? Yeah. They didn't, look, no they didn't look that saggy to be able to do that. Well, unless she's got the elusive third nipple somewhere. Oh, yeah. Just chicken wings it over. Yeah, because if they're enhanced, sometimes those things point out a little pigeon toad. <laughs> you guys think they're enhanced? I think a lot of the ladies in this movie yeah. are. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm with you, Karan. I think maybe a natural breast, uh, you know, of the pendulous state, that's probably <laughs> possible to get that yeah. folded. She does keep but. a cowboy hat on him. All right, Dalton gets yeah. shit from one of the bouncers, Morgan. We recognize Morgan, right? 
Uh, is that Funk? That's yeah, Terry, Terry Funk. Funk. Yep. He's breaking up a fight, and then he gets pissed off. Uh, if you're not drinking, you're out of here. Then one of the waitresses, one of the one of the good ones, Carrie Ann, introduces herself. She asks Dalton his name. Holy that is shit, one she... of Five Day Rentals rules as well. So. Yep. Uh, Dan, you recognize Carrie Ann? She may be uh, coming up. Carrie Ann Conway, yes. All right, 2029. This is, we get this cool insert of Frank walking in the back office area and somebody has written on the wall for a great fuck. Call this number. And he changes the fuck to Buick. <laughs> now, I don't know if that's his number or if that's his way of like, fuck is inappropriate, but I'll yeah. at least, I'll at least allow, you know, fucking craigslist ad i think he's like today's the day we start cleaning up this bar <laughs> <laughs> that was step one <laughs> all right like we said uh dalton seems to recognize the band he goes up he kind of plays coy the lead singer of the band is jeff healy jeff healy uh who i, I don't know this i'm not that familiar with him is he blind in real life he I lost his so. sight at 18 months. Wow. Yeah, that's right. I couldn't so. remember if it was 18 years old or 18 months. He's a Canuck. Well, and, I mean, singer, writer, actor, and he invented uh, the Heelys. So that's something. <laughs> Dude's got it, dude. I mean, if he could do it, anybody could, right? <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> He got shit right. on soaps. He's playing Cody. Uh, Dalton kind of sneaks up on him. It's pretty cute. And Cody tells Dalton that this is a, uh, it's a pretty rough joint, man, of all the places that they've been to together. Now, Carrie starts the word that this stud is the one and only Dalton, and the staff start passing this around. One guy tells another dude that Dalton once killed a guy by ripping his throat out. To this, the other guy says, Bullshit. Dalton watches an interaction. Some dude offers to let another guy kiss his wife's breasts for 10 bucks a kiss. And this guy can't believe it. Really? He's like, yeah, buddy. And this guy goes over there and just starts fondling. And he's fondling for a good 30 seconds. And this husband is like, are you going to kiss him or not? I can't. I ain't got $20. <laughs> Guys, I know everybody's moving to like all cashless, but this movie is the reason I always carry two tins in my you wallet. Never know. <laughs> this cracks me up every time I see it. Do you now, Kron, you said you do two tens. Is that because maybe you kiss the first breast and you realize Ugh, nah, yeah, it's not what, worth wasn't worth it. Now, now, you I don't, don't I don't want to I don't want to kiss that second one and I don't want you to not be able to break a 20. So, yeah, you don't want to commit up front to <laughs> two. You can pay 10 and 10. I mean, <laughs> those looked natural to me though. Those had some those had some um movement to them. It's 89. Yeah. Every chick looks 39. But that's just 89, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've seen that footage, right, of, like, high school in the 80s, mm -hmm. and they, they all look like they're 30 fucking years old. So. Yeah, everyone looks like Hall & Oates. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes me feel not crazy, because when I was a kid in elementary school, high schoolers seemed s massively mature. Mm -hmm. You see high schoolers now, you're like, hey, what, you, what are you, 12? Elementary school? Yeah. Get off the, the bench press, you fucking broccoli-headed dick. Get the fuck out of here. That's usually my interactions with them. What are you, fucking play pickleball or something? Huh? You're wearing Crocs, but socks pulled all the way up to your knees. What the hell? And, the, and they're fucking white. You know they're going to get all, like, dirty, right? Oh, that's right. You don't do anything to where they're going to get dirty. Okay. Yeah. It's a sign of- Carry on. Relaxed wealth kids these days generation of brewster's millions dude and then the, the god the, preach it cron that little it. thin string book bag thing probably's got yeah. like a pair of yeezys in them mm -hmm. yep 
you know, because you don't want those to get dirty. Yeah, just a little nylon pouch behind it. They're buying shit to put in their shoes so they won't get creased. I'm like, what? I mean, the price of shoes is ridiculous, so. Get off my lawn. Maybe I care. <laughs> Maybe I do care about that. I don't know. Yeah. Fuck those kids. <laughs> They're never going to the double deuce. Michael That's Jordan sure. was right. <laughs> All right, so uh, this fucking old man joke. Okay, and at this point, if you don't realize, like, oh, this movie's a comedy. This is as much as this thing is going to be an action flick. This is a comedy. Every other scene documentary. I wish, (laughs) I wish. But this interaction causes a a brawl. Pretty much everybody but Dalton gets involved place gets fucking trashed frank finally calls dalton up to his office we cut to after that the staff are nursing their wounds they're cleaning up the joint i'm gonna echo what these other two said i would have liked to have seen an eyeball being swept up deliver on your promise please probably knocked a half star off this movie for me (laughs) (laughs) so dalton he's leaving morgan calls dalton out you gonna help us out or not I heard you had balls big enough to come in a dump truck. We don't look like that much to me. Opinions vary. <laughs> well, and also, I mean, any guy could come into a dump truck. It's just a matter of, <laughs> he's yeah. not going to fill it up, but. My note was, Kron will take this one. Not from the, the <laughs> I don't think every dude could do it from the street. Oh, not at there, 39, Brone Snow. Oh, you're like standing on a second floor, hanging out of a window. Okay. Uh, the truck is backed up to the building. But I think that's what Morgan was implying, <laughs> that Dalton's balls were like big enough to generate enough of a rope. Oh, okay. To arc, in, to arc into that thing. I'll try it like 19, but yeah, that's probably it. I was shooting ropes at 19, bro. <laughs> Sticking them against the wall. All right. The next day, Dalton picks up a uh, pre-owned V8, and then he goes to a junkyard, buys a stash of extra tires. I get that the joke is kind of like, he's buying this piece of shit car, but the car is cool, and it's a V8, and it's like, I'm sure he bought it for like $200 or something. I mean. I think it was a couple grand. Okay. I feel like now, though. On the windshield. It would be like, oh, here's your, uh, here's your Hyundai or some shit. You know, it's like the the cars that you could get that are like beaters back then are so much cooler. Oh yeah, I actually looked up that car. It's a '65 Buick Riviera, and that was the only year they did that. Fuck, when he's all, does that work in the clamshell? Yeah, headlights, and he's like, sure do, and he fucking does them. I was like, dude, those are fucking slick, man. Like, bring that shit back. I mm-hmm. think. That car, uh, Jay Leno and Bill Burr do a, a thing where they're checking out the Riviera, which That's is pretty awesome. dope. But I used I like- to like the fucking uh, the 71, 72, I think 73, the boat tail. That's what the Riviera is famous for. I don't know. That's it kind of when the like the Chevelle body style changed from boxy to like early 70s, more sleek and like really muscle car looking. Uh, they all kind of mimic that, like the Skylark, the Chevelle, Nova. The Riviera's got a fucking really sweet boat tail, like trunk, which is like distinctive, uh, which called that out to me. But one thing I love, this is such a throwaway thing, but how the how excited the car salesman is. And when mm. he sees Dalton coming up, he's like, oh, I got him. He's yeah. eyeing the Riviera. He's like, she's a runner. Something about that fucking line, like his shit-eating grin. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. But I think it goes that the way he, he, cause he, we see him walk by like three or four. He stops at the Riviera. He lights a smoke. I think that's sort of his way of like, I could get any beater, but I wouldn't mind something with a little style. Like there's something that stands out. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think not to say that it's reflective of Dalton's philosophy or whatever, but there's something to say I'm getting 
a relatively classy car that is going to be beat up. Right. You know, he could have just gotten a, an old beater truck or something, but. All right. Now, I like that, though. Yeah. Yeah. And I think him the- going to buy the tires because you're going, what the fuck is this about? But it, it pays off wonderfully throughout the yeah. movie. My wife seen an old mountaineer the other day. And she's like, God damn that. He needs to take that to the junkyard. <laughs> and I'm like, that's a fucking V8. That dude's holding on to that shit. And it was just like, <laughs> like gone. I was Old like, yeah, it's probably like a 96, but it's it's running better than this, baby. <laughs> Old Mercury Mountaineer. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the thing is a V8, but you've got enough room under that hood that uh, Hogan's can, arms could get in there and work on it, you know? It, mm-hmm. Well, and all the trunks on these cars can fit uh, four tires. I mean, <laughs> storage room alone. Yeah. It's incredible. Not to mention the multiple ashtrays that are probably in the door. <laughs> oh, yeah. In the center console. All right. He then drives out to this beautiful lakefront property to inquire about a room for rent. This is where he meets the ultra horny Emmett who basically gives him the room for a steel man. This thing is awesome. It's like the, a loft of this giant barn, fully furnished. And he's all, uh, oh, what's he He says, uh, listen, it's not about the money, you see, but if the Presbyterians found out that I was just giving his room away. <laughs> now, you could kind of take this as if the church found out I was just letting a attractive guy stay at my place. Oh, okay. Or, you know, that's a hundred dollars that you could have been given to the church. I think mm-hmm. there's a little, a little something there, but I think I'm, Emmett's got a yeah. little bit of like a, uh, I should be paying a beautiful man like you to stay here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he really likes Dalton. I mean, he does. And I think it is. I mean, it's mostly just like a goof, you know. But uh, yeah, he seems to to really like Dalton around. It definitely, it (laughs) amplifies the fantasy element of this. You just roll into town, you find a beautiful place like that, and it's only $100 Yeah, a month. You found a great car, uh, an awesome place to stay. Yeah, and he's going to find a fucking beautiful broad in a few days. What the hell? Dude, Emmett drops a couple pieces of science too, like some sage advice at what the the whole the Presbyterian Church and and he's like, well, ain't it peculiar how money seems to do that very thing? And then later on too, when he's talking to him about like getting with the gal or whatever, he's like, are you too smart? Are you too stupid? He's like, well, maybe she's smart enough for both of you, you know? Like, yeah, I thought that was cool. How he just kind of peppered in a couple like sage, old uh, old man sayings. wisdoms, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, he, what's he say? Uh, you honest? Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Am I supposed to believe that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. They've come to an agreement about the room, but then a helicopter flies over super close, startles all the horses. Emmett gets all pissed and he says, that fucker does that shit just to piss me off. And inside we see fucking Brad Wesley just smirking to himself. Staff meeting at the Double Deuce. Frank introduces Dalton as new king shit. Immediately, Dalton steps up, fires Morgan. You don't have the right temperament. Morgan's you, like, just, you just fired your bouncer who has shown the ability to take a huge amount of damage. I mean, if you've ever seen some of his classic barbed wire matches with Cactus Jack, the man can just eat damage all day long, dude. <laughs> I, I mean... It, it, Listen, you're building your BG3 squad. Sure, you want a tank, but come on. Damn it. It's a classy place. It Again, it's about temperament. How many more months do we... How many more? Or is it until GTA 6 comes out? I, I will tell you this. I've completed my third playthrough of BG3, and I am taking a short break. So, so we got to endure more. We'll okay. see. We'll see. If- what, are you playing? what are you playing in the meantime? Nothing. Got Masturbation? Prep. I'm, I'm prepping for Smashville. <laughs> no, nah, I'm trying to come in a dump truck. I'm saving it up. <laughs> yeah. Trying to fill up a dump truck? <laughs> yeah. 
it's the new I'm the new evil Knievel. <laughs> what have you been yeah. doing for Smashville? Watch, Tequila? Shut yeah, the fuck up. Listen. <laughs> Listen to the end of the show, listener. All right. Morgan gets all pissed. What the fuck am I supposed to do now? There's always Barber College. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good one. He fires Got him, dude. He Roasted fi- his ass. <laughs> he fires the drug dealer. I'm telling you straight, it's my way or the highway. That chick just gets up and weaves too. She's like, yeah, all right. Like, <laughs> I sell drugs, so yeah, what? Yeah, me. Well, she doesn't, want him, she doesn't want Dalton to rip on her hair. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Everybody seems to be on board, and it is time for this class. All right, it's time to class this place up, and they're going to do it with three simple rules. Number one, never underestimate your opponent. Expect the unexpected. Number two, take it outside. Never start anything inside unless absolutely necessary. And number three, be nice. Be nice. If someone gets in your face and calls you a cocksucker, I want you to be nice. It's a job. It's nothing personal. What if someone calls my mama a whore? Is she? <laughs> I want you to be nice until it's time to not be nice. How are we supposed to know when that is? You won't. You are the bouncers. I am the cooler. It's the first night under the new guard. The band is rocking. Dalton is enjoying his coffee. He watches the bartender pocket some cash. He tells one of the bouncers to intervene when a chick gets up on a table and starts dancing. One of these patrons pulls a knife on the bouncer and Dalton intervenes, disarms the dude and smashes his head into a table. Everybody is fucking impressed. It's just a little murmur through them. Who is that guy? Who's that guy? Yeah. Cody over the PA. The name is Dalton. (laughs) Oof. I think the uh, bartender is the lead singer of the famous punk band X. Yeah. John John Doe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's he's so fucking good in a scene later on. He pops up in a lot of movies, man. Yeah. Like he had a cool career. Like his band is pretty sweet and then he's never like a lead guy, but he's always just playing cool shit. So I think a lot of you could tell who was in the like that punk rock directors. So yeah. One of the other bouncers, Steve, he's hitting some chick from behind in the fucking stock room he's all into it i think i'm gonna make you my regular saturday night that's what i do in 5dr baby is that a in the movie is that because those chicks didn't have id to get in yeah i don't i don't i was looking at that too i don't think it was the same chick of the two that he let in earlier that they're like she's like this is a sears card he's like oh just let him in i I know him i don't think that gal matches. Okay. Okay. I could be wrong though. But if so, yes, your your inference is troubling. Yeah, it just seemed like he was, you know, hooking up with high schoolers or something. So pretty scummy nah. dude. Yeah. I think that girl has experience doing that because the way she like lifts her top up is like oh, she's been caught before. Like, yeah. <laughs> she's like, all right. Some she's things good. are instinctual, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> It was like <laughs> Dalton comes in and lets him go. Uh, what's he say? Like I'm on my break. I was on my break. We'll stay yeah. on my it. Stay on it. Lunch break, lady. <laughs> <laughs> All right. At the end of the night, Dalton calls out the bartender. He says, "I figure he's costing you about 150 dollars a night." Frank actually backs Dalton. He's a little reluctant, and uh, but they fire him. Well, it was a good night. Nobody died. It'll get worse before it gets better. Dalton steps outside and finds that his car is fucking trashed. Tires slashed, windows smashed. Now, that night he's at home. I guess it's, you know, what, three or four o'clock in the morning. He's reading a book and across the lake, Brad Wesley's mansion. Hey, man, this guy is throwing a fucking bomb-ass pool party. Another, uh... Midwest legend. He's reading Legends of the Fall, soon to star Brad Pitt from Springfield, Missouri. 
Uh, my favorite part cool. here is the big guy that is dancing <laughs> and having just an absolute blast. And Brad, that's Wesley. what your eyes were on in this yeah. scene. <laughs> my eyes were on. They're still wearing their heels when they're jumping into the pool. There were no tits in that frame, Cron. <laughs> It's allowed. Not in the particular frame that I was going to reference when <laughs> Ben Gazzara comes up and is like, I love this guy. I love this guy. Yeah. <laughs> there were tits beforehand, certainly. But He's the biggest I guy. I love this guy. <laughs> you think Gazzara would have ran for president had this movie worked out a different way? I would have voted for him. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, Brad Wesley is Trump, right? Yeah, he's kind of got some in a, Trump in way, energy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can see that. He's a pretty I mean, smug motherfucker. Yeah, 80, I mean, Trump's popularity or like reference started in the 80s. People were aware of him. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still watch movies where like it's like, uh, oh, back when little little rascals yep. Home Alone 2. <laughs> yep. He's in that one. Yeah. He's in Little Rascals. Oh yeah, is he? Yeah. Oh yeah. He plays um, Alfalfa. Like, no, the rich <laughs> dork's dad, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Huh? I guess I didn't realize that. Yeah, I've just flashed back to it with the kids the other day, and I was like, "Oh no, shit!" That movie uh, fucking holds up. I agree. When's the last time you watched Little Rascals? I'd say within five years. You brought up Little Giants, like. Little Giants yeah, fucking holds up. You, fucking my, hey, the annexation my fucking of Puerto dad, Rico, fuck around. <laughs> my dad fucking cracks up at Little Giants. We got you New Jerseys. <laughs> they got your names on them. Good, so the guys at the morgue can identify the bodies. <laughs> Dude, that kid fucking rules. Yeah, man. Snot bubble. All right, the next morning... Carrie Ann busts in to wake up Dalton. She's bringing a bar Cron, breakfast. You've, you've never seen Little Giants, have you? I've seen it. It's been a <laughs> long time, though. I feel like the one that I go back to is uh, Sandlot. Like, I've probably seen that within the last, yeah. you know, five years. That's fucking time. Uh, fuck. Don't do it. I'm going to say it. I'd rather watch Little Giants over Sandlot. I think I just watched Sandlot so much when I was a kid that it's, like, stuck in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Little Giants just didn't, I don't know if I didn't see it at the same time or what. I know I've seen it, but Sandlot Sand just, like, bore yeah. a hole into my brain at some point. I think Sandlot hits that fucking, like, 1950s Americana cherry pie boner for a lot of people around our age, probably, around, like, oh. the mid to late 30s. I wouldn't fight you for Little Giants, but, yeah, I'd I'd have to always, I'd I'd have to go with Sandlot, too. I have to do some rewatches. If we, if you were gonna argue, what's what is the better execution? Yeah, probably Sandlot. But that fucking jokes per minute and Little Giants, man, and the rush that I get when the one kid is fucking running off with the ball and his dad, who is never around, and it's this whole subplot through the whole thing. And his dad shows up and he's at the end zone and he's like, dad, and just jukes all these fucking kids just so he can run in and hug his dad. Fucking Niagara Falls, dude. You're at the water park. Oh, uh, Little Giants is the one where they put the like Altoids in their mouth. Yeah. Yeah. See, Dan, I've mean, fucking seen it. Yep. Piece the of shit. I, I don't even remember that the, shit. <laughs> the kid who can't catch puts the sticky mm -hmm. shit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, fuck it. Dan, write down kids' sports as a category. One kid gets fucking kicked you in the balls it. during the field goal, and then the next time they cut to the field goal, he's like terrified. Yeah. Ready, <laughs> set, <laughs> hike. I heard he did extremely extreme sports. It's not the same. Football's not an extreme sport. And Kron chose robot jocks. Yeah. Baseball is not an extreme sport either. You said extremely extreme, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I had to get robots fighting each other. Pretty fucking extreme. We got we got robot jocks and MXP. 
Snowboarding is an extreme sport. <laughs> Compounded by the fact that it's a primate. <laughs> the next morning, what, Carrie Ann busts in. I'm going. She busts that's in. That's when I knew me. this was going to be a hit. <laughs> She brought Dalton some breakfast, and man, does she sneak a little look at that little oh, yeah. Patrick Swayze tush. Who didn't? <laughs> what I love about this is how obviously upset Dalton is, like bothered. Um, and then at this point of the movie, if you haven't already started the drinking game of drink every time Swayze lights a cigarette... If you needed a little bit of a buffer, start here because he's up for a good 30 seconds and immediately lights a smoke. Yeah. Do you think that was just him? Like, I'm yeah. going to smoke throughout this he, movie. He was I think so. notoriously a multi pack smoker. You guys miss those days? No. Sometimes when I watch movies like this, fuck yeah, I want to light up every 10 minutes. <laughs> she warns him that firing the bartender was not a good idea. Cron didn't answer. <laughs> I want to smoke every day that I wake up, Dan. Yes, that's the answer. We all know it. Quit bringing it up. <laughs> I know. All right, cut to Wesley out for a fucking, I don't know, Saturday drive. Shaboom, shaboom. Just God. weaving in and out of the lane, having a fucking blast. This dude is rich. He's running the town. Almost takes out Dalton, who is on his way to Red's auto shop. He's there to pick up a new windshield and an antenna. He introduces himself to Red. Uh, some cool old guy back and forth with he and Red. Red tells him, you know, I moved here with my wife. She left me. I stayed. Um, and Brad Wesley and a goon comes in. Brad introduces himself to Dalton, and he looks forward to uh, Dalton cleaning up the double deuce. Um. On his way out, Wesley's uh, tag along, I believe this is Jimmy in this part, uh, gives Dalton a stink eye. Yeah. Emmett catches Dalton doing oh. some Tai Chi by the lake. When that guy peels out, uh, like the two goons, when they peel out, it looks like that guy almost loses the car for a second. <laughs> like he he kind of like swings out too far and has to overcorrect and then he's like cutting back the other way. Yeah, this is the famous uh, Swayze in the sweatpants, just absolutely shredded and oiled. Tai Chi is the perfect fucking thing for him to be doing, because later should've, on... He should have had a cigarette hanging out of his lips yeah. at this part. <laughs> uh, now, if you catch it, the, the movie, it, it's, it's giving it to you, because this part of his training, he's Tai Chi, he's centered, he's balanced. Later on in the movie, we see him training... He's fucking punching shit. Mm -hmm. he, 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 is, he has changed. He's turned it on. Across the oh. lake. Go ahead. Wait, wait, sorry. Th this part, did it, this, it struck me this time when he's doing all that Tai Chi shit out front uh, and the music, did you guys notice the music? It made me, re somebody else just covered this, but uh, Highlander is one of my all time faves. Didn't it remind you of the music when he's fucking doing like the training montage with Connery? This music, I don't know if you can you can picture it in your mind's eye or in your ear when he's doing the Tai Chi. I was like, dude, this sounds almost like the exact same when Lambert Lambert is uh, doing his training montage with Connery. Okay, I'm glad Nobody? you brought up the music. Dan, you did, uh, you took us through Highlander. Do you yes, recall? Sir. Now, I know Queen did music for the score. Was Michael Kamen the composer on that? Because there are parts in uh, Roadhouse that feel like the Die Hard score. And I believe yeah. Die Hard and Roadhouse are both Michael Kamen. I could be could be wrong. I can double check on that. Okay. Uh, I don't remember off. But that's a though. that's an interesting pull, G Baby, on the the Highlander rip. Because I didn't catch that, but particularly later during the Jimmy fight, the music sounds like uh the intense fight cues of Die Hard. Right All right, well, while he's doing this Tai Chi, we see Wesley uh, catching a peek while he's out riding his three-wheeler. 
that's a definitely dated reference. Those dangerous, <laughs> uh, dangerous fucking machines. Was that a thing with you guys? Like, I, I remember growing up, it was like you never ride a three wheeler. Like they were illegal, and like the, to me, it, growing up, that was one of the things. Like it was like uh, this big scary thing. When I got older, and it's like, yeah, just don't get a three wheeler or. It's, it was super prohibitive to even get one, so it wasn't that big of a like threat to impress upon people when you're younger. Yeah. I will tell you, <laughs> I grew up down the street from a kid who every six months had a new machine. Like his dad gave him enough money or bought him a dirt bike when he was like 13, and he would earn a little bit of money and then trade for something else. And for a while, he had a three-wheeler, and my it was the one thing where my dad was like, don't ever ride that. Don't ride on it with him. So I think even in the early 2000s, it was like already kind of locked in. This is an mm-hmm. outdated thing. And even after that, I think he only had it for a few months. I remember playing on it like in the winter time. And that was about it. I don't, I don't remember, like, I don't think I knew anyone that had a three wheeler, but I definitely knew a bunch of people that had four wheelers. And it would just be like, hey, go take the four-wheelers. And they'd be like, I don't even know how to drive one. And it's like, that's the fun of a four-wheeler. You'll figure it out. Yeah. Like, I feel like people would just be like, here, go drive this machinery around for fun. Yeah, you can get loose in a fucking four-wheeler. But having that, that wide base with four wheels is definitely, it's, it's to me, I think of it kind of like just hopping on like a mule. Like one of those utility carts, like a golf cart almost. It's kind of, but some some quads though. Yeah, you can get you can get squirrely though. Oh, I fuck wouldn't yeah. recommend like I uh, just hop on it on the back forty and bring it back. Like, <laughs> I miss it. I miss having a four wheeler. Quads are dope. Michael Arnold came in April fifteenth, nineteen forty eight, to November eighteenth, two thousand and three. Die Hard, Event Horizon, Lethal Weapon, The Dead Zone, Last Action Hero, Roadhouse, Highlander, License to Kill, The Last Boy Scout, Adventures in Babysitting, Hups and Hawk, Nothing But Trouble. Damn. Solid. And Metallica S&M. Yep. The Dead Zone, 101 Dalmatians, The Iron Giant, X-Men Brazil. The hell is X Men Brazil? <laughs> no, Brazil. Correct. It was in Portuguese. Oh, it was oh, I, got it. Okay. I thought it was X Men <laughs> colon yeah. Brazil. So it was <laughs> impossible yeah. to follow. Beautiful pool, G baby. Beautiful pool. Sweet, you know. Beautiful old... ass on Gina Gray. <laughs> Won't argue that. <laughs> All right, Pat, the former bartender, he sh- is at the double deuce when Dalton comes in and he's got a few goons with him and he demands his fucking job back. I'm staying (laughs) and you're going. Frank just kind of lets Dalton do all the the back and forth here. One of the taller goons, I think this is O'Connor. He says that the booze supply for the double deuce comes from Brad Wesley, Pat's uncle. There's a little back and forth and Pat finally pulls a knife out on Dalton. Dalton dodges. Come on, chicken dick. (laughs) Dalton kicks Pat through the office window. He takes on the other two goons. One of them, I'm going to call Fatty and Suspenders. Uh, He slices uh, Dalton's side with a knife. Dalton goes out the window with the other goon, eventually takes this guy out. The other bouncers come in and help subdue the fatty. Cut to Dalton in the ER. He's getting stitches from Dr. Clay, Kelly Lynch. He's got his medical records on the ready. He tells her about being a bouncer. She's going to add nine staples to his record of 31 broken bones, two bullet wounds, nine puncture wounds, and four stainless steel screws. And one tuition at NYU. Mm -hmm. Uh, The doctor asks about that degree from NYU. Why is that in his medical record? (laughs) Because he might have gone to the hospital at NYU. I don't, I guess, I don't think they put that in. I mean, my college isn't listed in my medical record. No, okay. Mine but is. NYU well, probably is a has a medical school, right? One of those pieces of paper could have been like, 
NYU medical, blah, blah, blah. And it could have said student. Hey, laundry man, what happened? Or maybe he uh, just he was lifting up a refrigerator. I sliced my finger, Doc. I need stitches. You have a uh, bachelor's in history? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what are we saying, G, baby? Oh, maybe he just slipped it in, like, on purpose. Just for yeah. an event. Just, that- just in a chance encounter with a Kelly Lynch type that would be mm-hmm. impressed by it. I think that's a little more likely. <laughs> Oh. This guy knows he's going to be meeting a lot of doctors. So maybe he's some got of a, them are going to be hot. A card inside, like, and it, you know, if they're hot, he flips it to one side that says, yeah. you know, NYU degree. And then if it's a doc, the, he flips the card over and it says, can d- come in a dump truck. Yeah. You know, he's going <laughs> to impress the doc. All right, she asked him about this degree, and he says philosophy, man's search for faith, and that sort of shit. there was an uh, uptick in dudes trying to come in uh, dump trucks after <laughs> after this premiered. There's going to be after this episode comes out, I can tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, there's a direct correlation, like all cat dump trucks built in 1990 were a <laughs> foot taller. Just They figured out what the peak was of possibility the roadhouse uh incident the roadhouse <laughs> effect all right do you ever win a fight no one ever wins a fight dude it's like we're fucking that's such a he knew he had her right there mm-hmm. like you said he's got her so he asked her out sometime she also digs him about his height motherfucking bigfoot Pulls up to Brad Wesley's place. Pacific, Missouri, baby. What That's the where Bigfoot's f- from. What the fuck? It's a Missouri movie, baby. I know. It's got to show up. <laughs> but I'm saying, if you're you're if you're not already invested in this movie, how do you yeah. get to this and not go, all right, fuck it. You, you're- well, this is perfectly understandable for me. I'm like, yeah. oh, Missouri, Bigfoot, Pacific, Missouri. Okay, yeah, I got it. If you're flipping the channels and you see this fucking truck pull up you're putting you're throwing the remote oh fuck it i don't know what this is i'm watching it that's probably how they got me back in the day i probably saw (laughs) yeah monster truck roll up to a guy's mansion and was like let's see what happens this is the life i want to live in Mm -hmm. the future yes what's going on here all right there's also a car behind it but who gives a fuck about the car it's bigfoot (laughs) bones did your did your dad ever be like hey just between you and me, don't ever play on that kid's monster truck. Yeah. No, he would be like, uh, hey, ask you, that kid want to come over? Yeah. Ask his dad to bring the big truck over. I re- remember my dad had a 1987 Toyota 4Runner that I eventually bought off of him. Dan recognize, remembers this truck. Bulletproof, man. Should have um, kept it. Should have should have kept it, but you know, uh, there. Two thousand five to two thousand nine was rough for everybody. <laughs> anyway, I had always asked him, like he had it lifted. I think he only had a three inch lift on it, and we would always talk about like, should we put a bigger lift on it? And he always said, like your mom couldn't get in it. Like that would be the problem. <laughs> it's like, uh, in a guy that was in the Navy with my dad, he had this giant, I want to say it's a GMC, is it Scottsdale? Like, not a Silverado. It was, I want to say it's Scottsdale or something. I fucking K-5. love this truck. Um, Yeah, it was, I feel like it was old enough that he had antique plates on it. So he could, Okay. Um, but he had this thing massively lifted and he had a bench in the back like a step stool <laughs> yeah. that he had to get so his wife could get in. And I always thought that was the coolest shit. Like one of those three steppers? One, Yeah. Yeah. So when he, he would, That's awesome. he would open the door, reach around, grab it <laughs> and then hop out and then walk around and open it up and she'd hop out. Hell yeah. You know, uh, at my dad's softball games and like just watching them play. And then I'd like look over at that truck. Just think, Oh man, if I had that truck and Kelly Lynch, my life would be perfect. (laughs) Catch a line drive in the dome. Cause you're staring at a, (laughs) some guy's truck. 
worth it. All right. So uh, basically, this is all of the Brad Wesley lackeys that are coming to update on the Dalton situation in this particular beatdown. One of you boys owes me an apology. So they all start. Uh, it's like O'Connor and the fat man. They're just like, we're sorry, Mr. Wesley. We're sorry. They're we, we are so I am so sorry. They're doing their best. And Wesley's like, I believe you, Tinker. That's fat man in the suspenders. But not you, O'Connor. You know why you disgust me? He starts beating the shit out of O'Connor. You're a bleeder. You bleed too much. He guy just them. could be an alcoholic. I yeah. mean, <laughs> his blood's that nobody thin. would Nobody would give him a steak. Yeah. <laughs> Wesley needs his dude in the balls, knocks him out. Gets to, get this piece of shit coward out of here. Dalton shows up to Red's just as Wesley's goons are leaving. Inside, he finds that the place is all trashed. Red comes out with a fucking mop bucket. And he admits that, you know what? Wesley's been muscling a take from all the businesses in town. It started as just like the city council, you know, small percentage cleanup thing. And he has just weaseled his way into basically running the town. Cut to Sam fucking Elliot working a wet G string contest. (laughs) Fuck yeah, dude. He's got to calm down uh, uh, some troops that are getting a little excited. And he gets a call from somebody. It's Dalton. How's it going, mijo? Dalton hey, asks. Dalton asks Garrett if he's ever heard of Brad Wesley. Nope, but you in trouble? Nothing more than usual. And Garrett starts going on about, yeah, this place I'm working at has a sign above the urinals that says, "Don't eat the big white mint." <laughs> But phone call gets cut short because Garrett's got to go stop a fight. Cut back to the double deuce. It's time Carrie Ann is up on stage singing with the band. And that blonde from before, the one who can push her nipples together, (laughs) she comes up to Dalton and she's like, why don't you look me in the eye, Dalton? I'm shy. Would you be shocked if I said, let's go to my place and fuck? This forward is- <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm taking a half day boys <laughs> this is where Kubrick got the line <laughs> for eyes wide shut yeah <laughs> I didn't know that good research Bones Jimmy busts in and he pulls Denise away that's her name Denise so that's how I'll refer to her I mean she was blonde up until then okay they hadn't, they hadn't said her name yet she's a woman she's yeah. a character she's Denise she has agency We'll get some depressing news later that you'll want to yeah, remember her fuck. name by. Fuck. <laughs> With Denise out of the way, a fleet of Wesley goons comes into the bar. Dalton clocks one of the dudes wearing a knife boot. Oh, I I thought it was just like a key item for later in the game because of that <laughs> beat of light. It's it. So And then perfectly. the fucking zoom in right to yeah. it. <laughs> right foot. Gonna need that boot for later. Dude, he's like Neo in the one and shit, like he, when he can see the code and shit all the way at the beginning when he's just like, and I like how you see the detective work through his eye. He sees the drug deal and he sees the bar tender slipping money off the till. You know, he know he, he notices Morgan's like not cut out for it. He sees the boot, you know, like he's like all seen. Mm-hmm. He, he clocks, he knows where to stand. Mm-hmm. Like he finds that post. At the bar, which is it's kind of reflective of where he was when we first meet him at the bandstand. You know, mm-hmm. that little corner area where you can kind of see the door, you can see the stage. I think it's fucking cool. Yeah. All right. A uh, bunch of goons come in, like we said. We see the knife boot. And Dalton sends uh, some of his guys, or he goes with them, actually, to go fr- to confront these guys and says that they were closed. <laughs> And they're like, what the hell's going on in here then? Uh, people drinking, having a good time. <laughs> but they drag them outside. The Double Deuce gang, it, hey, they hold their fucking own. They take these guys out. And as they push all these dudes away, Dr. Clay shows up in a picnic tablecloth for a dress. Dude. Hell yeah, dude. She pulls it off. She pulls it off. Oh, yeah. I think it's working. Yeah. I liked yeah. it. 
<laughs> yeah. I and, may goose to Kelly Lynch for sure. Also, one thing we skimmed over to when he says, we're just here to have a good time, and fucking Swayze says they're gritted teeth. Dude, I lo- gritted teeth, Swayze is my favorite Swayze. He's like, you're too stupid to have a good time, you know, and yeah. they just get into it, and it's like a nice little <laughs> montage showing like him and his crew taking out a few B squad from Wesley's team, just showing like they got the stuff, you know, and then Kelly Lynch is right there like, oh, shit. Yeah, I just whooped ass. Uh, Swayze has this enunciation where it's, I, I don't know if it's like the smoker's lung. Yeah. Where it comes out and it, it has a musicality to it, like the drinking and having a good time. It's like he's <laughs> out of, he he's always like 10% short on the breath he should have. Uh, I don't know. I I love it. I fucking yeah. love it. I love it's this calculated. Movie. Yeah. Uh, oh, so we're so close here. So uh, doctor shows up and Dal- Dalton takes her out to uh, Bonnie's grill and we take a pee break. All right. Welcome back. Dalton and the doctor they went out for a sweet date at Bonnie's grill. Sweet thing here where they're sort of going back and forth and while they're at the bar, there's a old drunkard at the bar that's passed out. Dalton has to kind of catch the guy from falling over. We get a, you know, a hint of his niceness and his reflexes. Mm-hmm. The guy at the diner's like, shit, I might have to start charging him rent. And goddamn, if Dalton isn't classy, he pulls out a bill and says tonight's rent. Let's the guy sleep it off. What a nice guy Dalton is. I mean, 100%. at his core, you know. After their date, the doctor drops Dalton back off at his car, which now has a stop sign sticking out of it. Uh, Karanji clocked that Jeep. Oh, the ladies' Jeep? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The doctor's Jeep? Yeah. It's cool shit, dude. And did you love that whenever we see Dalton in it going forward, he's always driving now? <laughs> I didn't <laughs> notice Alpha baby. <laughs> Dude, from afar at the beginning, I was like, is she driving a fucking tracker? And I was like, oh, no, okay. This would have been, this would have been in that area. Uh, yeah. Like Geo Tracker, late 80s, early 90s. I, it was just top of mind because I saw something on Instagram. Someone was like hawking like a pristine, like a 91 tracker that was like Miami viced out with like flamingos on the seats and like pink and like these bright like turquoise shits. I was like, dude, that's fucking rad. I legit have to hit the I'm not interested on the <laughs> uh, classic Ford pickup. Like. Because not me, I stare I, at him all day, well, I'm dude. Too tempted because <laughs> I'll be like, "Well, that is worth sixty five thousand dollars. That is a beautiful <laughs> truck. I want that truck. I miss that box style. I want a single cab truck." Yep. Yeah, you know. I could be in North Dakota by like three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I, I just built that I into sent, the price. I sent one to you guys, and I was looking at that post so long. I was like, "What's the down payment that would be needed to?" <laughs> Get that thing. Fuck. Yeah. And that's the, that's this type of post that then fucks my algorithm up and I have to go in there for a while and (laughs) clean everything up so I don't get it. All right. Y'all don't think I looked up CUDAs? I've been looking up CUDAs for a while. Like too expensive though. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. A lot of El Camino, El Camino is making a, a comeback. I think. Well, Phantasm did, like, diminish the CUDA market. <laughs> you know, they went through. Yeah, they yeah, went through a dozen. 18. I used to watch a show on Net. I think it was a Canadian guy. I can't remember what the show was called, but he would redo. And he redid a CUDA, which perked my interest when I started looking into those. And then he, his brother was super into the Riveras, and they would always make fun of him, like, because he was super into that car. And they redid his Rivera for him, and it looked fucking awesome at the end. And everyone was like, 
yeah, fuck, dude. I wish like we would have bought more of these and shit. So, dude, if you look them up, I think it's the seventy-one and seventy-two body style Rivieres are fucking. That boat tail is really slick looking, almost like a Batmobile kind mm-hmm. of looking fucking car. It's it's rad. All right, Dalton is ready and waiting outside of his place, just sort of sleeping on the the hood of his car when Tinker and O'Connor show up. They say that Mr. Wesley wants to see him. At Wesley's pad, we see Denise doing some 80s jazzercise. Oh, wait. I love when he hops off at the hood of his car. Like, yeah. he just Super jumps aggressive. off real quick, and, the- and they both, like, take a step back from him. <laughs> I, yeah. I get that you only need to send two, but I would have liked it if there were, like, like six. 12 guys. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. They brought the fucking the tall man. Oh Hell yeah. yeah. That'd be too many that's one too many timelines. I couldn't keep track of it anymore. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he Den- could go into that timeline, yeah. Denise is Roadhouse. doing some eighties jazzer size. She covers up her bruised up face when she sees Dalton come in. Dude. That's- Reggie walks in, he's like, I'm in Jasper, Missouri. Wesley is enjoying his breakfast, and he barks at Denise to shut that shit off. Can't stand that shit. It's got no soul, I think he says. Yeah. Dalton sees a photo of Wesley's grandfather. Looks like a great man. He was an asshole. Wesley starts going on about all the great shit that he's done for the town. 7-Eleven. J.C. Penny is coming here because of me. <laughs> There's also a part where he's like, the mall, the photo mat. I put those there. I was. I wrote down like, two thousands are going to be rough for Wesley when all yeah. his <laughs> empires crumble. Yep. Wesley tells Dalton that he knows Dalton once killed a man in Memphis. Now remember, we heard that rumor earlier on in the movie, and to this, Dalton has a little bit of a reaction. Wesley asks Dalton what it would take to hire him. And Dalton flatly rejects the offer. There is no price. He leaves. We're at the double deuce. There's a line around the block, man. The fucking... The updates have happened. It is a classy joint now. Looks sick. Yep. Fucking the neon double deuce, the new sign. It's fucking looking pretty pretty sweet. The bouncers are like in an actual uniform. There's no chicken wire in front of the band now. Yep. Hello. And the most important upgrade of them all, <laughs> Keith David is your bartender, man. Can't rain all the time. <laughs> it can in Blade Runner. Uh, but don't get your hopes up. Bartending is all Keith David will be doing yes. in this movie. So, Can we get into the double deuce? I think you can if you got the cash, dude. Yeah. Better, and if you're willing to stand in that yeah, line. Yeah, you better get enough. there early. But it turns out that the booze is starting to run low. There are no suppliers that will deliver. And Frank basically lets him know, hey, Wesley's probably behind this. Dalton says that he will take care of it. Outside, the doctor's waiting on Dalton. And, oh God, I fucking love this cutaway. So in inside of Bigfoot are two of Wesley's goons. And they see uh, the doctor and Dalton kind of smooch and getting it on. And one of them says, uh-oh. And the other one kind of threw laughter. like, dig a hole. Yeah. I fucking love this. <laughs> it is funny that they take the monster truck to, like, be inconspicuous yeah. and spy on Dalton. I mean. Well, you're going to get such, is... you're getting a higher point of view. You get a better Vantage, field of vision. Yeah. You got the yeah. fucking panopticon you up can, there. Yeah, you can park all the way at the back of the parking lot. <laughs> Yeah, but I you're still that, visible they, yeah, at the they back do that of the long, lot. They do that long, wide shot, and it sticks out like a sore fucking thumb before they zoom into the cab. I'm like, Jesus Christ, they brought the fucking Bigfoot. Dig a hole. <laughs> the two head back to Dalton's place. Uh, does she recognize the place across the lake? Because she's giving it the eye. Dalton finds some oldies on the radio. Well, first he like has like... Ma- you know, the modern, like, pop rock station or whatever, and they both are like, no, fuck, fuck that. 
He turns Maybe that she's a like, I don't want to fuck in front of this. In front of what? In, in front of the house. She like knows like hey, somebody's going to be watching us. Oh, so instead, let's fuck up against the mantle of the fireplace. Mm-hmm. And it's 89 on the radio. He should be head like a hole, you know, like nine inch nails. <laughs> not, not maybe on pirate radio, but not out in Jasper. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And these two, they bone down. Cut to uh, we got a little shot of the Kelly's lynches. She gets out of bed, and, uh, meets Dalton out on the rooftop for a smoke. Doctor asks him to stay, and he says, I don't think I can. We cut over across the lake, and we see Brad Wesley watching. The, doc- the doctor's never like, you should stop smoking. <laughs> no. It's 89, Cron. <laughs> it's keeping him lean. Yeah. Smoking's it's still not- good for you here. It's 89. It's not 59. I mean, <laughs> by 89, we knew cigarettes were bad. We knew in 59. 89, you're still smoking in the theater, bro. There's people smoking cigarettes watching this movie. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. People are smoking while they're in the buffet line at Golden Corral. You know? Especially in Missouri, dude. You know they love their cigarettes here, bro. Come on. There's still bars that you can hit here that still have smoking, and that's one of the reasons they go there. Cody and Dalton. At that, at that time, they still, like, uh, my, my grandfather would walk through the grocery store and smoke a cigarette and just ash on the ground, and someone would come around... <laughs> Like a bus boy or like a, you know, one of the lowly grocery workers and sweep it up. Along so, with the yeah, eyeballs. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude, that's wild. That yeah. wasn't that long Fire ago. department must have responded to a dumpster fire once a week. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's before they put in that shit that fucking, that snuffed them out. Whenever that was. Uh, I'm... We'd be lucky if your grandfather was smoking filtered cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, we had family friends that were burnt in like bed fires from cigarettes. Jesus. Cody and Dalton are having a chat the next day at the Double Deuce, and Cody warns Dalton that he has heard that Wesley has a thing for the good doc. He just wants to let him know. The boo shipment has arrived, but uh some of Wesley's goons are trying to intervene, but someone else also shows up. Fucking Wade motherfucking Garrett pulls up on his motorcycle in front of the double oh, deuce. shit, mijo. <laughs> he goes inside. He asks about, uh, is there a guy named Dalton here? And they so eh, he's in the back. But what we cut to is Dalton getting knocked around by four of these goons that were trying to stop this booze supply. One of them's got they're like holding Dalton up against a post, and then there's another guy just like laying into his body and shit. That one guy breaks a ton of booze bottles too. I mean, he's chucking he's boxes. Slamming. Oh yeah. yeah. As well, as soon as that fight starts, he just goes for that like everything that's on that dolly. Yeah. And he could just I, I push it over, but he grabs it and well, he was I think like it's tequila. Nobody so will it's... be bowling in my cul-de-sac tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Laundry Dan staying out of here. <laughs> All right. Wade confronts the biggest of these goons. You want to fight dickless? Well, I sure ain't going to show you my dick. Wade nuts this goon, kicks him in the knee. Goddamn, that hurts, doesn't it? Wade takes out the rest of the goons. And Cody introduces the rest of the staff to Wade fucking Garrett. Is this your s- second... Sam Elliott movie in a row. Yeah. <laughs> so? Not I mean, counting Kron's tombstone. Yeah, it's the third so. one in not a very long amount of time. <laughs> Jesus. Again, so? So, Miho. Who gives a fuck, Thank Miho? You, Miho? Thank you, Bone. Thank you, Miho. <laughs> Dalton's taking Garrett to go meet the dude, the, his, his new lady friend, the good doc. I fucking knew it. <laughs> the three go to a bar where Garrett shares stories of previous fights and even shows off his pubes. Yeah. Guys, if I was dancing with your lady like this, we'd be fighting, right? This is this is Wade's way of approving of the doc. 
He yeah. is busting his balls. He would never actually do anything, but his, yeah. I think the flirting and everything with her is he's trying to get her vibe. This is his way of telling Dalton. I like her. She's cool. Yeah. So totally. It was a total ritual. And he just likes showing people his dick, which but, is why he does the <laughs> check out dude, my scar. He wants to yeah, see her I, reaction. Mm-hmm. I made that note. He did not need to fucking unzip his pants for what he showed her. I was like, <laughs> come on. Yeah, but we needed to see it. <laughs> I needed to see that. We needed to see the happy trail. <clears throat> Computer enhance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dan went frame by frame. <laughs> I sent you guys an email. Did the Blade Runner fucking... The, the attachments were too big, dude. <laughs> Couldn't <laughs> open it. Yeah, like old school dial-up. It was just loading the photo. It was just a torso. <laughs> I thought I saw it all, but the pubes were the last third. So they shut this bar down and they head to a diner where Garrett and the doc share a dance. I think this is George Strait. All my exes live in Texas. Mm-hmm. Great song. Nice, nice throwback. Garrett is, like we pointed out, just straight up flirting with the doc, but I believe this is his, his way of approving of her. That girl's got entirely too many brains to have an ass like that. <laughs> you got your hands full, kid. Now, Wade can sense that something is wrong with Dalton, and he just cuts right to it. He says, you're a long way from Memphis, man. And he says, forget the past. Cut it the fuck loose. That girl never told you she was married, and when a man sticks a gun in your face, you got two choices. You can die or you can kill the motherfucker. (laughs) Time for the doctor to go get some sleep. In Memphis, he slept with a married woman and then killed her husband. (laughs) When he probably came home and pulled a gun on him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, but... You know, maybe ask one more question, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> We're well, at the double deuce. Fair, if she's not, if she's not forthcoming with that info, yeah. I mean, that's fair play. I hope she's doing time. <laughs> at the double deuce, Cody and the band are absolutely shredding when Dalton is told that Red's place is on fire. Dalton runs over as the fire department shows up, but the place explodes. It's right across the street. Mm-hmm. From Great explosion. The, the awesome geography of this town is tiny, I feel like. I feel like there's the Reds, auto body repair, the club. That's it. Bonnie's Grill. Yeah. And I guess the JCPenney is going... But yeah, they're bringing in JCPenney's. They got them all. We don't see the mall or the 7-Eleven. Give me a scene with Wade getting a Slurpee. You guys just ain't been to Jasper, man. Back inside the Double Deuce, Wesley is at the bar, and he the bar. What the fuck? And he's rubbing it in. <laughs> I think he says, uh, "Call those firemen in here. I want to buy them a drink." It's like a Morgan here. Play something, Elvis. Play something with balls. And love me. Ten. Please no. Stop swinging that pillow so hard, Scylla. <laughs> Denise gets up on the stage and starts stripping. And hey, baby, I got you a pistol to match that dress. Before we see too much, Dalton tries to stop it, and we see Wade pull his hair back into what is the greatest male hair, uh, male hair performance of all time. I, I will die on this hill. Sam Elliott's hair in this is... This is the best male hair ever. It's not a wig. So I, it's legit. It's he's got that early pepper. I can't early wait. Early pepper. <laughs> Julie Michaels is who plays Denise, and she was very nervous about this topless scene that you're talking about, the table dance here, because uh, her boyfriend had just committed suicide the night before filming. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and producers were like, hey, we can, like, you don't have to do this. And she's like, you know what? I'm going to do it. But she was an emotional wreck the whole time. 
that she Fuck. was shooting this scene. Fuck. <laughs> That's fucking brutal. I, just doing any acting in general would be tough. So this yeah. is uh, more power to her. Thank you, Denise. Shit. Yeah, I mean, she made it look pretty effortless. Like, when she was doing it, she's fucking selling it, you know? Like, that's crazy. She did that under those kind of circumstances. Fuck. Well, Dalton gets Denise off the stage, and he tells Wesley, if you're going to have a pet, keep it on a leash. To which Wesley responds, you're right, Jimmy. Jimmy comes out, man, and uh, I think he was playing pool. And he comes out to the dance floor. He's got a fucking pull cue. He calls out a few of the bouncers. Dalton gives him the nod. Yeah, let's go. Three of the bouncers take on Jimmy. But another one of Wesley's goons throws a chair into the mirror behind the bar and a fucking brawl starts. Wade and Dalton, they have to get involved. Now, Jimmy flips up onto the stage and he calls out Wade. The two fight. Wade throws Jimmy into a table. Jimmy gets some blows in on Wade. Dalton has to step in. But by this point, Wesley fires a warning shot. Says that's enough. This ain't working out, Dalton. We're at Red's house. He's had enough. He's leaving town. Now, some of the other local business owners are there. We see Emmett. We see Frank. And they're trying to get him to stay. Hey, don't you have insurance? He's like, it's enough. It, I've had enough, man. And... They were like, we know it's Wesley. We knew it was Wesley. And he basically calls him out like, are you any of you going to take the stand against this guy? And Frank starts like pumping up Dalton. He's like, last night, this guy put fear into him. And Dalton counters and says, nope, no way. Dalton's out for a Jeep ride with the doctor and Cody. Now, at this point, and even at the end of the movie, Cody's just like tagging along with the doctor and Dalton. And I think that's kind of cool. It's kind of sweet. And they drive by the car dealership where there's a bunch of commotion. And uh, I think it's the bigger bouncer that works at the double deuce. He runs over and he says, looks like Wesley wants to put something down on a new car. <laughs> this is a good line. Sure enough, man, fucking Wesley orders Bigfoot to drive through the fucking showroom, smashes the wall, of glass, half a dozen cars. This all looks so good. I mean, it's a real monster <laughs> truck driving over real normal vehicles. It looks so good that there's like innocent bystanders that are kind of cheering. Like there are people that are shocked <laughs> by what they're seeing, but then there are, I don't know if these are extras that are just like, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. And I'm waiting you guys, for Gravedigger to come out next. Yeah. Have you guys ever been to a monster jam? Yeah. Fuck yeah. I just went in January. And it's fucking awesome, dude. Dude, it is. I've I had a been smile about, on my face like the whole yeah. fucking time. I've never been a big motorhead or a big monster truck guy, but my dad was a big into dirt bikes and shit, and he used to take me and my little brother. Every year they would come to the Bay Area, we'd go to monster trucks. And like that was that experience, and I didn't think about it anymore but dude when you're there and you're in the seat it's fucking unadulterated american fucking just yeah trucks smashing dude it's I, fucking cool. I could watch that shit for like four hours straight and be like <laughs> yeah dude it's awesome it connects to just like you said the lizard brain american yeah that is a giant thing that we have made to just crush other things and the don't, don't knock it till you try it. I'll say that. And I would say, like, seeing a movie in IMAX, the fucking sound is equally as important. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. You get the smell, like, the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like you got a perfume on you when you leave. And you're like, it's over? Come on. <laughs> you guys can do, like, another hour. Come on. Did they bring out any kind of like a truckosaurus to? Nah, man. Like to... Grave Digger was there. Uh, I don't know. So... Bigfoot, Grave no, Digger. Bigfoot is officially retired. I think oh. they have a a son of Bigfoot, who is like the guy's actual son. 
But I thought maybe since it being so close to St. Louis, like maybe like Bigfoot would show up, but nah, he didn't. So. What was the one that was the fist? Was that Samson? <laughs> Dude, that sounds awesome. I can't remember anything. It feels okay. like Big, Bigfoot and Gravedigger are like firmly planted into each side of my brain. Like when I think monster trucks. Oh, but they the, did have a bunch of other people. They're the stars. They're shit. the Steve Austin in the, the rock of. Yeah. Monster fucking Monster Dude, I think, yeah. I, I think I remember there was one named like fucking Venom or something. And the, the front hood was like a snake. Snout. Oh, I kind of remember yes. seeing something that. Something like that. I could be wrong. Maybe it was called something else. But I want to say it was like Venom or fucking Viper. And it was like a fucking snake truck. <laughs> they have a, a Megalodon, which is like a shark. <laughs> He tipped over and like all his fins fell off. <laughs> I have a video, Austin. You did the video, but uh, they, and then a lot of them were like uh, companies, like construction companies and shit that had like an, a car and shit. Fucking You're so that. good at placing rivets. We're putting you on the monster truck team. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I just looked it up. You got to look up Samson. It's like two. F- Two forearms and fists <laughs> coming out the front of the truck, like the fists are where the headlights would be. It looks dope. It's like it's like Dude. the Bible, <laughs> Samson, right? Yeah, I I feel like every Monster Jam I've ever been to has some sort of religious undertone. Like you're definitely praying before. <laughs> Who's the strongest guy in the Bible, Samson? Yeah, all right, I'm doing that one. Not Jesus. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome <laughs> Jesus. Dan, there's a difference between a uh, spiritual power and brute force. <laughs> they they get some guy dressed as like a Roman who comes out and like pokes the tire, <laughs> deflates the tire. <laughs> That's it for Jesus, or is it? And three hours later, he comes back with a new tire. <laughs> I was going to say, come back in three days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So this is Wesley just sort of flexing on all these business owners. All right. Oh, my God. He jumped the water. <laughs> <laughs> he turned the water into jet fuel. Yeah. <laughs> he the landed jam funny off on. that. Landed funny off that jump. He's lost his crown of thorns. Yeah, this is bullshit. I bought tickets to Monster Jam, and Jesus wins every time. It's bullshit. Gravedigger, Venom, one of you will betray me in the drag. <laughs> Venom, I know you're a serpent. <laughs> Take this bondo for it is my body. <laughs> All right. Wesley is flexing against all these business owners that he senses are getting inspired by Dalton and the double deuce. And does he have a crown of thorns on the car? <laughs> yeah, when he comes back. It's encircled around the cab. Dragging a big cross. That's the, That's the tractor pull. Part, That's the tractor pull. Yeah. The crucifix pull. <laughs> It's the one time the crowd's allowed to go down and like throw shit at him. <laughs> God damn. There's a there's a lady in the audience like, that's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Mary? <laughs> we gotta stop. We gotta move on. All right, all right. Um Also, after this, Wesley pulls the doctor aside and he basically says, you need to get Dalton to leave because shit's getting out of hand and it's going to get worse. Dalton is now doing Tai Chi, but uh, or he's not doing Tai Chi. Rather, he is fucking hitting the bag. He is doing the Seagal hard to kill John Wick, you know, rope on the board. He's fucking pissed. Wade shows up and tries to calm him down. What I like here is to get up to the upper level, Dalton climbs a rope, 
and Wade's like, ah, fuck that, and then has to limp up the ladder. <laughs> what we haven't talked about is Wade has a little bit of a limp. Yeah, he's got a bum leg. Yeah. In this discussion, he's trying to calm him down, but maybe he's like, maybe I should stop telling you what to do, or maybe I should kick your ass. <laughs> Dalton comes at him, just fucking swings, but Wade catches the punch. We're not doing this. I love you, and I'll see you later. He fucking takes off. Doctor shows up, and Dalton is just fucking short weather. He's like, you, you came here to tell me to leave, huh? And he's fucking had it, man. I'm not leaving. I'm tired of guys like Wesley always taking and taking and taking and then boom, Emmett's house explodes. Dalton takes off. He manages to run inside, get Emmett and get him out before the house blows again. (laughs) Emmett is alive and Dalton hears and sees Jimmy driving away on a dirt bike. Dalton manages to, uh, you know, give chase, uses his knowledge of fucking geometry, you know, that he fucking took a course in at NYU (laughs) I think the guy on the dirt bike would have gotten away had he not stopped to laugh at Dalton. You got to like laugh, man. Five seconds. You just blew up a house. Villain laugh. Yeah. It's evil. But Dalton catches up. Great fucking dive tackle from Swayze. Dude, that vault was sick. Fucking tackles Jimmy, knocks him off the bike. Prepare to die. You are such an asshole. The two square off, kicks, punches. It's a pretty even bout. Um, this is where I wrote some diehard in the score here. They start getting closer and closer to the water. Jimmy hits Dalton with a piece of wood, gets up behind him. I used to fuck guys like you in prison. I believe I, I saw a quote from the guy who played Jimmy. His mother went to the premiere of this movie. And when he said that line, the mom stood up or something and said, that's my boy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Dude, thinks that's, he, that's the kind of mom you want in your corner. It's yeah, like, that's a, that's fucking red. I mean, what's the what's the dub over this line to get this on TBS? Probably like I used to love guys like you yeah, in prison. Okay. I mean, I've heard some wild ones, but yeah, that one you gotta kind of thread the needle. I used to duck guys like you in prison. I was gonna say tuck, buck. I think loves probably. Good call, Cron. They just left that one in. They were like, <laughs> it's a powerful yeah, line, dude. You're gonna Great see line, right bro. Through we'll, it pay the, we'll pay the fine. <laughs> Jimmy th- FCC just uh, hit us up. Yeah. He thinks he's got the upper hand on Dalton, but Dalton takes it up a notch and lands a bunch of blows. Jimmy pulls out a gun finally. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill you the old-fashioned way. Dalton kicks the gun away. What the fuck? He rips out Jimmy's throat. I feel like the old-fashioned way would be barehanded, right? I mean, they were already doing this fight the old-fashioned way. I mean, The new old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. What was the first murder? Was it with a stick? Was it a 2001, like, was it a rock? Yeah, probably like a rock, I bet. See, that this part, this is where I went back to like my hazy memory towards like the the last third of this is even this time I had to rewind it. I was like, cause they don't show the rip very well. They show the mm-hmm. aftermath, but I could have sworn he always, I always thought he grabbed like a rock, like some kind of jagged rock and fucking stabbed him in the neck. And then like this, I, I ran it back and I was like, holy shit. Yeah. He fucking, he just like Eagle talons this fucking dude's larynx out. Like, I was like, damn. But then that, it makes sense, like, going back to, like, like that's his, that's the way he killed the dude in Memphis. He ripped a guy's throat out, you know? Like, so I like how they pay it back. Like, that's his fucking finishing move or something, you know? It's totally. You, you put in the right button combination yeah. for his yeah. Dalton's fatality. <laughs> his finisher, yeah. <laughs> it's totally possible. I mean, this is the era where they would shoot alts. So maybe there is a version out there where it's, Maybe the throat rip is so graphic that maybe mm. they shot an alt where he does, you know, hit him with a rock or something in the throat. The superstation cut. Yeah. That's like the second time you said superstation, and <laughs> I absolutely fucking love it. I have to. 
I can't. It's just, it's just, it's a tick. Do you remember the monkey interstitials that they used to do on TBS, where they would have these monkeys act out like classic movies? Ah, oh, man, that's that's tingling something. I've, I've, I can't maybe, really grasp it. I feel like this is something that Chris is going to hear and immediately send us a link to, or Brantley's going to be like, "Oh, these are all on the archives." He's, He's hammering away on the keys yeah. when he listens. But yeah. th- there is an incredible one that I remember. My friend had a tape of uh, Surviving the Game with Ice-T from the TBS broadcast. And one of those monkey interstitials was on, and they were doing Top Gun. And I remember <laughs> this line. They were like, you got a bogey on your six. And he picks his nose, and he goes, no, I got a bogey right now. <laughs> Locked away uh, in my synapses. I will That's have it awesome. forever. I'm I'm gonna be hitting the Google cave for sure. It's a cron joke if I've ever heard one, but yeah. <laughs> when you said monkeys and like this time era, I immediately I can't, I can't stop thinking about fucking Dunstan checks in or checks out whatever that movie is. So it's clouded. It might have been yeah, it's pink peak monkey, you know. Then unfortunately we had, you know, we had the the one we had to put down. We had a few monkey deaths that chimp ripped that lady's face off and shit. So Fuck. have you ever heard the audio of that shit? I don't need to. Dude, the audio is so brutal. Oh I don't my need God. to. Don't, I'm a, yeah, don't do it. I'm about to start I'm about to unfollow rather one of like my <laughs> fitness guys that I follow because he's showing like squat injuries once a week now. Oh God fuck damn. Me. And like prolapse. That and just people collapsing under weight and their, you know, their femurs just fucking, col- you know, they just snapping. And I'm like, I, I don't need to see this, man. That's why I don't do a ton of weight anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> that'll do it. All right. So like we said, he rips out Jimmy's fucking throat. He kicks the body into the water. And right as this happens, the fucking doctor is finally ran. I, is she taking her time, huh? I guess she was checking up on Emmett, maybe. Yeah, for a good long while. Yeah. <laughs> so she cannot believe what she just fucking saw. Dalton grabs Jimmy's body and starts walking out into the fucking pond. Starts yelling, Wesley! Wesley! Fuck you! Fucking. Dude, she's so fucking wet right now, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think she's maybe a little like going what? the other way at this I, point. I don't know. Kron, I think the, the brain is telling her run. I think yeah. the downstairs brain is saying, "I've got to keep her. We got to go." <laughs> I think both both things were lined up at one point in the movie, though, and now yeah. at least part of her is like, "This might be a bad situation." We got to get back to She's the rooftop. Like, I am ovulating. Mm-hmm. She's like, "God damn, I am gonna squirt for this guy. <laughs> I'm, gonna squ- I'm gonna squirt into a dump truck." <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call it, 360 here on the Five Day Rentals podcast, and we just did it, boys. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> All right. But I was like, he pulled a gun on him. She that didn't, was self-defense. She didn't see the gun. She shows up right as he's like, whack, you know? I yeah, know, she, but- She just sees the throat rip. <laughs> but, I w- he, but he pulled a gun on me. <laughs> like, come on, if lady. If you're a chick and you- st- if your wife seen you pull a dude's throat out. Yeah. It, right? She's going to be like, I'm glad I'm with this guy. All right. He can, he can rip a th- dude's throat out. Yeah, right? That's I what I'm thinking. I mean, she, if it's like to save your family, that's one thing. If it's a guy <laughs> uh, like in front of you at the Walmart, I don't know. Well, My wife's tra- going to be like, you shouldn't have done that, but. Thank Did you. the guy in the Walmart have a gun and pointed at no, him? No, he's just like ninja. trying to buy his bananas or whatever. And just well, blow up a house? I mean, that's not, the other thing. Let's not rip his throat out then. We'll be all right. You know what? I used to rip throats out at Walmart and just throw them on the floor. <laughs> and this kid would come by and just sweep them up. Sweep them. <laughs> Fucking miss the 80s. Back in the good old days, dude. I was smoking in there. Yep. <laughs> All right, next day, Dalton gets the fucking double deuce just as the phone is ringing, and it is Wesley. Fucking a chick from behind on my break. Like, it's good times, man. Mm-hmm. All Wesley says... Breaks. All Wesley says is Wade or Elizabeth. 
You're a sick man. Well, I just have to flip a coin. Hold on a second. Sure shit. We see the fucker put the phone down. Flip a coin. I sure wish I could tell you how it turned out. Wesley hangs up and Wade comes stumbling in out of the back room. He's fucking half dead. Dalton knows what he's got to do. He's got to go after the doc. Fuck it. Time to leave. Wesley can win. And Wade is fucking stoked. Yep. That's what I've been telling you we, we should have done a few weeks ago. Dalton busts in on the dock looking at some x-rays. I would have Very loved... Very generic x-rays. Yeah. It's just like, here are lungs, here's the guy's skull. I would have loved like a nail in there or something, <laughs> you know, something kind of random. A Bowie knife. Yeah. Add to, add to her explanation as to why she couldn't leave right now. Like, you know. And she's just like scrolling through x-rays. It's like, like a whole sheet of them will move up and there's more like... What is this lady looking at or for? She's reviewing every x-ray from the past two months <laughs> in one shot. Some guy came in with a toy car up his ass, Dalton. I can't leave right now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, she refuses to go with him, though, despite him telling her that it's time to leave. That, that wasn't Preston, was it? He, Preston is from the Show Me State. No, it was, it was uh, Ryan Dunn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was thinking the old CKY shit. They went to, like, fucking Europe, and Steve-O swallowed, like, an eighth wrapped in a condom of weed and waited to go. I can't remember where the fuck they were, and they waited, like, four days for him to shit out this weed, and they're all fiending for weed and shit. Mm -hmm. It's like, dude, that's a fucking affliction, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> All right. Knoxville said. Dalton gets back to the double deuce to pick up Wade, but he finds him dead on the bar. Knife sticking out of his chest, holding a note that says, It was Tails. This is the second movie where he's come stumbling into a bar <laughs> injured that we've covered here on Five Day Rentals. That's it. Dalton takes the knife and he heads to Wesley's. We see the bends roll through the fence. A bunch of Wesley's goons open fire on the car, but it just keeps coming. It launches over some landscaping. Fucking explodes. This is awesome. The goons check the car, but there ain't no Dalton in there, man. He just put that fucking knife in the accelerator. The goons start checking the house. You think you could just stab through an accelerator? If you're Dude, Dalton. I was thinking say. the force would need to be applied pretty Well, and you've got the seat right there. Like, just to get enough <laughs> forward momentum would be difficult. Well, yeah. forgive me. Is he through the accelerator, or does he have the accelerator down, and he's got, like, the hilt of the knife? I thought it was, yeah. like, blade through the accelerator. I thought it, yeah, it was okay. through it. All right. I don't think Please. I don't think a Chris knife could have got through that though. Chris knives have a tendency to chip and shatter. It's part of what I, makes. I, it. Are you what talking, are you talking about, about video game again? <laughs> talking about no, don't don't. I am sorry. Not, it is not ball listeners. Gate. It's not ball. Nerd gate. alert! Is that you talking about Resident Evil Four? No, I'm talking about Dune dipshit. Chris knife. Oh, okay. Dune one or two? Well, I, they're in, Dune in general. There's the fucking Shai Halud tooth. Yeah, this guy gets it. You see Dune two yet? I did. Fuck yeah! Yeah, it was dope. I had my Shai Halusi and everything. Good for you, man. I didn't. I wish I did, but I saw the movie. <clears throat> I may go back and see it next week, actually, again. Yeah, it was dope. It's been a long time since I've done that, but I rewatched uh, Dune 84 this weekend and knocked out the audiobook this week. Have you seen the Jodorowsky's Dune documentary? No. My mom has told me to check that out, though. It's pretty cool. All right, so the goons go in the house. They're looking around for uh, Dalton, who's fucking sneaking around. 
He's already knocked out a few guards. Uh, yeah, we see Terry Funk laying there, but I thought he was just selling, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, he kind of gets done dirty. Like, he's got a lot of play at the, up on the front end. And then, yeah, like, he, they kind of... I thought he stuck around more. He had a bigger role when I was watching this. But maybe it was just the hair. The hair factor. Mm-hmm is what it was yeah you don't even get to see him get taken out of this movie it's kind of a bummer i think it's done well isn't he just laying there though like you don't see him get knocked out do you no no but i mean most of the movie is through dalton's perspective and i think that the whole coin flip thing i think is a cool scenario you know like he made the choice to go for the doctor and he tells Wade to stay back and have a beer. It's a bummer. It's a tragedy. Yeah. That that triggers him to go into fucking demon time though. And he's yeah. got that he's got that righteous fucking vengeance going on him. Oh, I was talking about Terry Funk <laughs> when he, when he gets knocked out. Oh. Right. Yeah, he is kind of unceremoniously like, oh, there he is. Mm-hmm. All right. Big thing here. Um Dalton taking these guys out. We get him throwing a knife up at Pat, the bartender. Dude, who, the sick knife toss. That was awesome. Yeah. I loved that. Uh, yeah, he pretty much takes out all these guys. Uh, then Wesley comes in and fires. Dalton has wait, to. Wait, can, can we touch on, on Tinker, the fat guy? The yeah, we're going he... to. Yeah. Okay. Well, sorry. No, go ahead. I, I thought I thought this came before. Sorry. Oh, so Wesley comes in and starts firing and Dalton moves around. But uh, this is where he's like around the uh, the trophy room and Tinker right. comes in and he's looking around and Dalton pushes a fucking polar bear like a stuffed polar bear on the Tinker and knocks him out. Was and- that thing 6,000 feet tall? Like, why was it so fucking gargantuan? I think that's how fucking big they are, man. <laughs> the thing was ridiculously huge. I think Dalton's line here is uh, you're made for each other. <laughs> but the noise, that's that little screech, like, cha, 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 cha. like the oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I kind of thought that his like, you know, his bow tie should have started spinning around or something. Yeah. It was so it's like a cartoon there. I just think it's so awesome that this is the part of the like, like you said, the, the fucking killer is out in Dalton totally acceptable for them to just be boss of the wall killer here, but yeah. they still set up an incredible thing with Tinker and then they're, they're still going to tag it coming up. So Wesley comes in. I see you found my trophy room, Dalton. The only thing it's missing is your ass. <laughs> he starts yes. his bad guy speech. You can't be mad at me for killing an old man. You took out all my boys. Dalton's still hiding. Wesley thinks he has Dalton, but Dalton sneaks around. Uh, Dalton do, or Wesley does manage to get a shot into Dalton's shoulder. Uh, he starts throwing hunting spears at Dalton. The sp- like just the framing of the spears flying that through the air is great. That he throws. Did you did that kind of like grab you for a second? Like the way yeah, this motherfucker's good, bro. Yeah. <laughs> he he just sailed like, that fucker. I was like, God damn. <laughs> And I love the fact that Wesley's like getting in on the shit. Wesley's not in a room ordering other guys to run after him. Like, fuck it. I, I got to get on in this. Like, we set it up by him beating the shit out of O'Connor. He can uh, ride a three-wheeler. That's badass. So he's got balance and grace. <laughs> so I take it you, you kind of bought him as a tough because earlier when he's brazen him in his house and he's like, I'm from the streets too, of Chicago. And he's like saying all this tough shit. And I was like, dude, just a second ago, you were in freewheeling in that car. listening to that fucking Shabu, like <laughs> Billy Joel doo bullshit. And I was like, I didn't buy him until towards the end. Like then he, he actually, he's fighting his own battle when yeah. he's forced to. But before that, I, I didn't buy this guy at all. It's like this tough head honcho what about you guys uh i could see that yeah i'd say probably like you i mean he seems i don't know i i guess you 
know that he's like the big bad. So eventually he's got to do something. But yeah, I mean, based on like the first two thirds of the movie, he really isn't doing much besides ordering guys around. I think you're programmed to think that you're programmed to think that he's just going to be, you know, to cower at the end. And you think that you're going to get him killed off first and then Jimmy's going to be the final boss, right. Yeah, you know, but the, I, I, dare I say it gives him some depth. The fact that he is sort of goofy <laughs> and just kind of hanging out and doesn't give a shit. All that does is indicate that he's high on life and he's high on his own supply of power. He's totally comfortable with that. And even when Dalton comes in and starts to check it, it does take him a little bit before he immediately blows up. Like he's, he is sending the goons out to kind of test the waters. He has no problem getting in Dalton's face, even though he knows like, you know, one-on-one this guy take me out. Now to be fair, Jimmy's with him the whole time, but I think by the time that you, you get to this, I'm not questioning the fact that he's ready to scrap. Yeah. Right on. All right, so he does throw the spear. He dodges that one. Uh, he starts beating Dalton with some like other, you know, hunting some stick or some shit. Leg. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but D- uh, Dalton does get Wesley in the knee. So big thing in this movie uh, that I forgot to touch on. One of Dalton's first lessons to one of the other bouncers was like, it "Doesn't matter how big a dude is, you fucking kick him in the knee, and he's fucking done." And then we see Wade use that move. So I like... We're about to find out, aren't we, Bones? Knee trauma. Bring it, motherfucker. (laughs) I thought that was funny, though, when he said that to the biggest fucking dude on his squad, too. I was like, well, that's kind of funny. This goes back to this thing. As a big guy, little dudes love the fucking... To come up and start shit. Mm -hmm. You know? I always wanted to try you, Dalton. I think I could take you, you know? Cron, I'm gonna. Sm- you you think you'll get up shit. to me? I will. I will smash a crate of tequila right on you. That's first thing a I'll big you- guy does in a move uh, in a in a brawl. I'll wait till your back's turned. <laughs> I'm not fighting the fair. God damn, that hurts, doesn't it? Mijo. I thought it would be fun to fight you, Dalton. Dalton kicks Wesley down. He's about to rip out his fucking throat, but stops just as the doctor arrives. Wesley tries to shoot Dalton when his back is turned, but the local business dudes are there. Red, Emmett, Frank, and the car man. They each put a shotgun round into Wesley. Red comes around and collects the guns, and he bolts. Now, I do believe that this might be based off a real thing that happened. Do you have this to in a, your notes? To a guy I know. <laughs> I, Dan, you're looking at me blankly. I mean, this is common stand your ground law in Missouri. Okay. What? I feel as though there is a uh, parable about a town that had some guy that was running amok. And the townspeople got together and they all shot him in the street. And then when the cops showed up, there was like a, we didn't see anything. We didn't see anything. A polar bear fell on me. Well, you fucking gave it away. (laughs) That that does sound about Frankenstein. No, I'm talking about like some town in Missouri where there was a story where there's, I don't know if he was like a a gangster wannabe like Wesley or some drunk that was causing shit, but there were people in the town, like a dozen people got together and they were like, we're all going to just take him out. And they did it like in the street and they, Somebody took all the guns and ran off. And when the cops showed up, it was like nobody saw nothing. And everybody just was quiet forever. That sounds really familiar. Yeah. Like I like early 90s lore of that happening. And like, yeah, it was cool yeah, because it was maybe, like a justified. Yeah, maybe somebody just got it from Roadhouse and just fucking trickled through. <laughs> this is anything. Uh, so, he- yeah. Here you go, Bones. Roadhouse is loosely based on the true story of the killing of a town bully named Ken McElroy, whose murder in front of roughly 40 people never went to trial. Yeah. Damn, that's awesome. 
where was it? Wait, say McKinley, uh, Missouri. All I or got was his was name is McKinley. Head. Okay, I'll look up the actual thing. All right, let's knock this out. The sheriff shows up. Skidmore, Missouri. Who's going to tell me what happened here? That is by Kansas City, I think. Red, Frank, Emmett, the rest of them, they all play coy. I didn't see anything. Tinker shows up. (laughs) Sheriff looks at Tinker. Everybody else looks at Tinker. Tinker, did you see anything? Polar bear fell on me. Polar bear fell on me. (laughs) Everybody. One of my favorite lines. Oh, it's incredible. (laughs) <laughs> Cut to Dalton and the doctor having a little skinny dip, and I'm pretty sure that Cody is on a picnic blanket up on the shore. I mean, he's blind, so I guess all he hears is this. Uh, dude is splashing. hearing real good. Yeah. <laughs> the splishy, the splishy, splashy, and that's it, he's dudes. In. Credits roll. Roadhouse, 1989. Dan. Gentlemen, Roadhouse, 1989, directed by Rowdy Harrington. Released May 19, 1989, with a budget of an estimated $17 million. Pulled in a box office of over $30 million, so it wasn't a failure. At the cinema that week, you could find Fright Night Part 2. Uh... A film that's debated from 1988 and 1989 called Miracle Mile, but we're not going to mention that. And a Denzel Washington flick called For Queen and Country. Patrick Swayze did hurt a knee during the filming of this. British spy in that one, right? I've never seen that, but I've always heard decent things about that movie. I was joking. Oh, I don't know. (laughs) I have heard decent things about okay. for Queen and Country, so that's a huge Denzel blind spot for me. Yeah, I've never got around to that one. Uh, Patrick Swayze did hurt a knee while filming this. Oh, somebody so, probably kicked him in it. So, <laughs> goddamn, that did, hurts. Fuck. He did choose to make <laughs> Ghost in 1990 because uh, it would be less strenuous. Uh, and he did turn turn down the role of Gabrielle Cash in Tango and Cash from 1989, uh, and Mike Herringon in Predator Two in 1999 or 1990. Sorry, Ghost was a big hit. Tango and Cash was a box office flop. Uh, the original tagline for this movie was, "The dancing over, the dancing's over." Now it gets dirty. Of course, this was after Dirty Dancing, so which was in 1987. That's pretty rad. Yep. Uh, Time is linear. Bones covered Marshall Teague's mother who stood up and said, that's my boy. Uh, According to Sam Elliott, every actor did do their own stunts. Uh, I fucking got the shit kicked out of me the entire film. Uh, They were trained by Benny... Or Guzdez, I'm probably saying that wrong. He uh, had nine black belts in nine different disciplines. I thought uh, for, your, also, for a second you were about to be like, just a guy who had been in a lot of bar fights. <laughs> now he's an actual trained guy. He did believe, though, that Patrick Swayze had the ability to become an accomplished uh, kickboxer if he put his mind to it. I believe it. Hell yeah. Uh, the band playing at the start of the movie is called uh, Kudosa. Uh, They disbanded in singer Tito Lavera. He did form Tito and uh, Tertora, which is the band that played at the Titty Twister from the 1996 movie From Dust Till Dawn. Uh, We covered Jeff Healy, lost his sight at 18 months. That didn't stop him. We covered Julia Michaels, who played Denise. Uh, The town in which the film is set in is a fictional community outside of Kansas City, Missouri, called Jasper. Uh, There is a Jasper County, which is an actual Missouri county. And as Dalton drives through the town, we do see Welcome to Jasper visible. There is an actual Jasper, Missouri, south of Kansas City. uh, And it has numerous rivers running through it, which we do see in the film. 
Uh, the movie also has a line where somebody says, I'm calling a friend in the FBI in Springfield. Springfield, Missouri is about 65 miles away from Jasper, Missouri. Uh, the garage where Dalton keeps his Mercedes is stored in the same place where Reggie Hammond's Porsche is stored in the 1982 movie 48 Hours, directed by Mr. Walter Hill. God damn it, Reggie. <laughs> And that's all I got, Joe. Well, I was like a valley. <laughs> Drink it. Well, I look like a valet. Is he here? No, it's too late for Nick Nolte to show up. <laughs> Dude, that's fucking gravel. All right. That was Roadhouse. G baby. Thanks for fucking coming on the show, dude. Hope you had fun. Fuck hell yeah. Dude. Thanks for having me on. This is awesome. All right. All right. We got one last thing to do. Any other major thoughts before we get into Rate My Letterbox, dudes? There are two lines I wrote down that we glossed over that I thought were fun. One is from Red. Yes, please. I can't remember what I can't remember what the fuck he asks him, but Red responds, Does a hobby horse have a wooden dick? I never picked up on that one. That was an awesome line. <laughs> And just so when when uh, Dalton dispatches the bartender the first time, he's like, "Consider it severance. Take the train." Like just the way he f- he's just ice cold and just fucking starts cleaning house. I, I love that. Oh, oh and one. that fucking that Tai Chi that kimono white shirt that he had tucked into jeans that you see a couple times. <laughs> I was like, dude, <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty tough to pull off. And he does, and it looks comfortable as shit, and I've already yeah. ordered one. <laughs> you got one, Craig? Uh, yeah, the part the part when he sends, uh, where he stabs the knife through the gas pedal and sends his car, like, flying at those dudes, uh, John Doe looks like he's having the time of his life sh- shooting that shotgun. <laughs> he is just like... He is blasting as much as possible. He's just like, <laughs> rate my box. It's a fun fucking movie. It is fun. And we will yeah. see what yeah. my score ends up, but uh, I will defer to you guys. Play amongst yourself. Uh, Dan, I think you went first last week. Cron, why don't you go? Uh, Dan, I'm going to give you a 4.0 on Roadhouse. G Baby, I'm going to give you. I'm going to do 4.0 as well. Dan? Cron Howard. I am going 5.0. Gee, baby, welcome to 5 Day Rentals. I hope you come back. I'm giving you a 5.0. Damn. Gee, baby. Cron, I'm going to go... Four five laundry Dan, I'm gonna go five oh. All right, guys. I'd like, I'd like to play just for fun. Oh shit, yeah. Okay, always, that's okay. I always do that. Uh Dan, I'm gonna keep you at the four cron four five. G baby four five. Please. As Roadhouse. Uh I mean, we kind of touched on it. This movie is just fun, right? Like from start to finish, uh, it's a roller coaster. The thing that I picked up on this time is uh, as the movie's going along, they do constantly kind of like ratchet up the entertainment value. Like a third of the way through, we've introduced a monster truck and now it just kind of like keeps building upon itself. Um do really enjoy seeing all the character actors that show up in this. Uh, there's a lot of like fun faces. Some of them they obviously could have done a little bit more with, but uh, it's good that they're there all the same. Um, the movie does feel just kind of like a like a dude fantasy, right? Like I can kick anybody's ass and every chick wants me. Um, so. There's nothing like rewriting the wheel in Roadhouse, but uh, I don't. We kind of said it with monster trucks earlier. 
just feels like American fun at a certain point. Uh, yeah, 4.5. Why not? Sweet. Gentlemen, Roadhouse 1989, February of last year, was the first time I seen this movie. And like I said before, it just felt like I was missing out on so much. <laughs> the smoking, the tits, the fighting. A guy rips a fucking throat out. The tits. It's showing you tits. All the way up to the very end, dude. Like when they're swimming in the fucking pond. Like, you're still getting tits. <sighs> It's so much fun, dude. I mean, a smile on my face the whole time. I've watched this three times now. I can't get enough of it. <laughs> Swayze is so great. Uh, I think it's just so much fucking fun from start to end. I think it delivers on everything. Gentlemen, this is a 5.0. Fuck oh, yeah. I hoped it wouldn't come to the fucking podcast, and it did, but... I know I wasn't going to pick it, so I'm sorry. I I have a good fucking time every time I every time this is on. So unedited, like rated R version. Uh, uh, G baby, it is your turn. I would like to remind when we have a guest on, y- your score is included in the final ranking. I don't know if that's ever been made clear, but uh, just remember that going forward. Right on. And now the floor is yours, my friend. Well, between Cron and Laundry Dan, I, I don't have too much to add to that besides uh, one thing we didn't touch on is the fucking ratio or the fucking tornado spinning heel kick quotient is off the charts in this movie, which I fucking love. Uh, through a window, fucking knocking guys out. Um, knee trauma. Uh, yeah, this is this is a... A great movie uh it's it's one you can kind of you just turn your brain off a little bit and enjoy it i mean this time it did kind of stick with me i was like where are the authorities in this film and like if if it didn't jump the shark at the introduction of bigfoot when it goes through the fucking dealership i was like dude this is this is out of control but yeah, this is this is one that I I'll kind of always associate with that like we talked about like lizard brain americana. It's just like yeah, you get to live out being a badass motherfucker and just wrecking shop and being a gentleman while you're doing it. Court and Kelly Lynch. Uh yeah, I mean it just checks all the boxes for for a good time. Um I'm going to give it a 5.0. All right, this is going to be a two-part review, so so bear with me. Um, I was always going to put this on the show, but it was always going to be something in, in the back pocket, right? And a, a seal had been broken, and it was time. But I was always nervous because I don't think that I'm, I was going to be able to do it justice. I have... Uh, my own personal torment with how I deliver uh, the plot breakdown whenever I lead a, an episode. There's the the pull of wanting to hit as much as you can, but not just go through the fucking script frame by frame. And you also want to be able to like have room for jokes and let things breathe. And we've always talked about that it's difficult when movies are comedies because you're trying you're basically doing hat on a hat. I thought we we did pretty pretty good. So thank you guys. This was a fucking blast. If anybody's like, hey, five day rentals there, they could have been a little bit better with their roadhouse review. I'll I'll take that. But I had a fucking blast. For my review, let me set the stage. You are fifteen years old. You are you family of four, and you're in the Midwest. And. You don't know what you're doing for dinner. Dad worked late. Mom had a rough day. But there is a Chinese restaurant 15 minutes away. And I'm talking old school American Chinese all-you-can-eat buffet. 
everything that you could want. Does your dad want chicken on a stick? He's getting chicken on a stick. Does your mom want six different types of vegetables spiced pretty much all the same way? She's got that. Your sister just wants to go straight for the fucking soft serve ice cream. She can do that. Do you want as much general so sauce to dip your fucking egg rolls in? You got it. It's not perfect. It's not high cuisine, but it satisfies you in such a way. You're full. You fart on the way home. Everybody has a fucking blast. And you know what? I can't eat there all the time. But when I do, I'm grateful that this place exists because it's set out to do something and it absolutely fucking delivers. Feeds a family of four at a reasonable price. That's fucking Roadhouse, man. This this is what I want in a movie. Yes, there it, it is important for zone of interest to exist. It is important for these movies to fucking question humanity and, and raise morality and make you think. But you need fucking Roadhouse. You need an escape. Life fucking sucks. And you love that fantasy and that idea that a guy can come into town clean it the fuck up it's capitalism run amok and he gets the girl and he gets tits it's fucking great it's five point it's a five fucking it's five it's a five i'd give it seven if i could (laughs) all right guys roadhouse would have an average score i bet you feel like an idiot right now (laughs) no i don't Why would I? I like movies more than I like Roadhouse. (laughs) You gave it a fair score. Enough said. Okay. Roadhouse would have an average score from the four of us of 4.88. This would end up at number one on the big list. This would currently be be right above Tombstone, our number two movie. Good company. Now, Now Dan's turn to... Bring a secret five-star banger into the show, and then we're done. I think the rule was if you never gave it five before. I don't know if you had bones, but... No. Uh... All right. Uh, Hey, congratulations, G-Baby. You got yourself a one. You will go (laughs) into the ranking for this season's Rate My Letterboxd. Booyah. Congratulations. Perfect score. Thank you, 5DR. Where are we with that, Kron, in our Rate My Letterbox rankings? Uh, currently, I would have a 9.5. Dan, you also have a 9.5. Bones, you have an 11. G-Baby, you have one. <laughs> Greg, I think you have... One. Did we have someone else guessed? Uh, well, DK was on for mm-hmm. Phantasms, okay, yeah, so. Okay. We don't play very my letterbox for this. Uh, Greg's column has a two, so either Greg has two points or someone else has, another guest has one point. Oh, okay. <laughs> I I think last season, Brantley, Brantley or Nil, uh, Nick, was it Jill? Does Jill? It have could be point? Jill. Okay. Yeah. Jill, you have one point. <laughs> G baby one. Greg one. All right. One last thing at the end of every category. We do play uh fuck eat kill. G baby, you get to hang around. I don't know if you know uh what the we've fanatic called. or road games. Road games. So uh but we'll come back to you. We'll come back to okay. you. Uh Dan, this was your category. Kron, why don't you go first? Fuck eat kill. Uh, if eat is number one, like I've always suspected it to be, I'm going to eat Roadhouse. I'm going to fuck Road Games. And I'm going to kill the fanatic by, I don't know, like shooting some of its fingers off and then uh, shooting next to its ear a couple of times. That's my kill. Thanks. That is also, uh what I would have Kron and I would kill the fanatic by dressing up as an English Bobby and beating it with a whistle. That that's what I'm doing as well, guys. Yeah, I'm killing the fanatic. Perfect. 
We did it. G baby, one last time, I want to give you the floor. Tell the people where they can find you waxing the porpoise, what's going on. Surely. And thank you for the opportunity for sure. Um, yeah. Waxing the porpoise, just check out the internet. It's a series of tubes. Uh, where anywhere you find your podcasts, uh, check us out. I think our next episode, which is yet to be released, uh, is we just did, uh, Richard Chase, the vampire of Sacramento, which is, uh, close to mine and Steve's hometown, uh, in the Northern California region. So that was one we kind of spotlighted for the, the regional flavor, but, um, yeah, we do movies, we cover, oddball shit every once in a while but um yeah thanks again for for having me on this was super awesome glad to be back anytime you guys would have me welcome to the family man you've been cursed uh <laughs> I, I just uh not too long ago you finally jumped in our discord i'm enjoying your your content so far please continue we love having you Hell yeah yeah how'd you like live wire oh yeah dude live wire was fucking awesome i loved it <laughs> five star banger fuck yeah dang <laughs> yeah it was it was fucking cool it was a do- total brosnan uh or brosman uh blind spot for me i had heard about it i knew i knew about the the uh lore behind it um but yeah it was it was something else i i really dug it for sure i'm glad he's got some fun pre-bond like you know uh that dude was willing to jump in and take some chances so it's fun yeah yeah i i even like some of the stuff he's done or most of the stuff he's done post bond like uh the matador was a lot of fun i'm a i'm a one of the few fans i think of the ghost rider which we covered not too long ago with ewan mcgregor really like him in that uh he did a fucking show too called the sun i can't remember what it aired on that's pretty fucking it goes pretty hard so yeah <laughs> Brosnan's FX, fucking cool maybe. in my book Maybe on Superstation. Uh, I think it was FX. <laughs> yeah, they're the only ones doing good TV now. They got the movies. <laughs> Dan, get us out of here. <laughs> Gee, baby, thank you for coming on. Welcome to the 5D Army. Anytime. Uh, Waxing the Porpoise is great. Check it out, everybody. If you are on Spotify or Instagram, please rate, review, subscribe to the show. It helps us bring the show to more people it helps us in world domination like we're aimed at um you can find us on the socials at instagram threads and letterboxd but if you really want to fuck with us there is a link to the discord on every episode that drops every wednesday of five day rentals so please join in there you can get g baby you can get cron you can get bones and me all on there and all the past guests most of them are on there i believe uh, so yeah, join that and um, Monster Truck Jesus. I could come in a dump truck. <laughs> nipple to nipple. Live fast, eat ass. All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Five Day Rentals Podcast. This is the after shower segment of the episode. Thank you to G Baby for coming by. Talk about our new number one roadhouse. Guys, this is normally where I'd be introducing a new category, and I guess we kind of are. But we also got an announcement. Uh we are recording the next three episodes that you'll hear, or I guess four, in person. The Dirty Dudes are getting together. Woo! Undisclosed location. Nobody try to swat us. I'll send you the address. <laughs> hey, Come reach out. Reach Come out. On I'll send it to you. If you stop by, you better bring some goddamn beer. That's all we're going to say. Mm-hmm. And a yeah, microphone. We- we are recording in person. Uh, we do have plans to record four total episodes, but like Dan said, depending on how much beer we drink, uh, you know, 
could be zero usable minutes. We'll find out. <laughs> I think we'll get to the first one okay. Mm-hmm. That f- that fourth one. That's yeah. there will be a disclaimer we'll of listen with caution. I think both nights the the night records could go south yeah. on us. We'll, we'll find out. Might be audio of me yarfing in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So this is that rare occasion where we're going to announce all three picks, right? Oh, yeah, I think so. I think we Am should I just just let them be surprised. No, I think no. Nah, we... I think we go ahead and let yeah. them let them know what we got planned. Why don't we Why don't we go in order here? Uh, we we did pick all of our selections. Uh, Mount Molehill, Chris has been keeping a list of movies that have been mentioned on the Five Day Rentals podcast, but never covered. I think the list is like what two, three hundred movies. It, I thought it was like it's, yeah, maybe. I thought I'd seen seven hundred on it. It's a, it's a lot. Well, we've decided to chip away three of them. <laughs> <laughs> so. Get ready to make some edits, Chris. Call it a thank you, I guess, for doing that, which is which is awesome. So it's doing God's work, yeah. But first up will be uh, me, Laundry Dan, with the pick of uh, the Edge with uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins and Alec Baldwin, soon to be murderer. Um, Women, <laughs> Charles. But- what did you? What do you mean, Charles? Charles. Charles. It's a bear. Charles. Charles. I I do have a number for how many said how many times he says Charles. Yes, thank God. Um, but yeah, I'll do. I'm doing the Edge. I think uh, it's a movie we've mentioned multiple times since we started this podcast. So uh, looking forward to that. I I think it's a good time. So yeah. Karan. Uh, our second selection for the in-person records will be the film Castle Freak from the year 1995, directed by the one and only Stuart Gordon. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And finally, you know it's a fucking Bones pick that's coming. You know it's over the plate. We're going to 1986. Tom Berenger in The Substitute. Mm. What a lineup. Started watching it yesterday. And you were able to pause it? You weren't so I think I had glued. Like, I had other stuff that I had to do that day, so <laughs> probably finish uh, it tomorrow. Sam watched it with me last night. Had an absolute blast. Can't wait to talk about it. And then, um, so if you are, are in our Discord, there was a vote out to our discord members about what movie we would be doing. I think we're going to call like a cocktail commentary. So, uh, Kron for the last year, you've been pushing the <laughs> bull shot on us mm-hmm. and we have relented. We will be finally drinking bull shots drinking all night, some bull shots while we watch and stumble our way through. It's going to be Hard Target. Uh, John Woo, John Claude Van Damme, <laughs> Wilford Brimley. <laughs> uh, Our first John Woo. Yep. Yeah. It was almost Roadhouse. It was pretty close. No, I, was ready, I was ready to get Roadhouse on here however the hell I could. But yeah, our first John Woo, another JCVD. I think it'll be fun. I'm I'm super stoked to... Get to hang out with my buds. Make some content. As as am I. Drink some savory cocktails <laughs> together. I'm gonna commit to one after that. What what if you love it? I say I'm committing to one. If I do love it, yeah, I'll I'll keep going, but I don't know. I might be pretty fucking hungover from uh, Castle Freak. So We'll see. I thought the audio uh, from Big Trouble in Little China was listenable, so hopefully we can maintain that. But if you're a listener of this show, you know we're uh, a lot of burps and bangs. Yeah, expect more burps. And, <laughs> and there, 
Somebody's banging. Oh, yeah. But I'm excited. I'm going to fart. Yep. Yeah. I'm flipping a quarter between the two of you. <laughs> Please let it be me. Wait, what? So, yeah, that uh, what we're calling Smashville, uh, that will basically be all of April. So, um, Kron, I'm assuming maybe after the substitute, you'll tell us you'll have an, another category picked. Yeah, I think at the end of substitute, we'll go ahead and announce that. Okay. That sounds like a good enough time. Okay. Fuck yeah. You got it or are you still working it? Uh, I mean, I've got a list of categories. I just need to pick one. All right. Maybe something will happen at the in-person records that leads me down a path. You never know. Well, thank you guys for a good uh, teen heartthrobs uh, category there. Not bad. Yeah, it was definitely... There was, there was one outlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Roadhouse. Sure. Bullshit. Bullshit. Bullshitter. I mean, you could have did a road category, which Roadhouse, Road Games. Blacktop. No, I was going to do Road Trip. Road in the title. Fury Road. Road Trip. Fury Road. I already did that. I would have did it my way. Yeah, but you didn't watch it in black and chrome. Yeah, I did. I did. the only way I did. You both did? I don't recall yeah, that. that's the only way I watched it. I thought I could have used some color. Yeah. It's kind of weird. <laughs> don't worry. You're going to like get like I got gypped. plenty of color in Mark Anthony's The Substitute uh, costumes. When I was watching this, my wife walked into the room and she said, is that Mark Anthony? I said, I think so. Really? Yeah. It's weird what they pick up on. It's always strange whenever my wife's like, oh, that's what is that? I'm like, how do you, I don't even know that. Yeah, she, I mean, I knew he looked familiar, but I was like, whatever. She knew as soon as she saw him on the TV. <laughs> yeah, I wish, I mean, Sam watched The Edge with me and The Substitute had an absolute blast. No way she's getting through Castle Freak. <laughs> Dude, show her castle freak, dude. Did she say, uh, is that Benny the Bear? <laughs> did she say, we, how did some kid go blind with I, that fucking she, car accident? She did. She was like, what is going on with this bear? This isn't crazy. I was like, he was a famous bear. Like, he was in a bunch of shit. So after the movie, I Googled him. He's and, in another 5DR movie. Mm -hmm. Um. And I was like, I told her, I was like, I think this year he came out at the Oscars too. I remember him being like brought out with a leash and shit, but he died. It's Bart. Yeah. Bart the bear. No. Yeah. Sorry to, to the family of Bart. <laughs> You're thinking Respect. Benny, Benny, the jet Rodriguez from the yeah. Sandlot. <laughs> he could outrun that bear though. So. The only kid who oh, could. Yeah. I don't know. Spike from little giants might've been able to take him on. I'm going to say... And uh, the icebox. Yeah. What's his name's going down in the first round? Jake Paul or whatever his name is. Oh, the guy who's fighting Tyson? I kind of yeah. I kind of hope, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude. We'll see. I sent you guys that video of Tyson training. Yeah. I was like, what, look pretty good. Seeing that down video last week is what prompted me to. I was like, why is the fuck is he training again? And that got me down the the rabbit hole that he was signed up for that fight. I don't even know when it happens, but it's like what, April or May, yeah. maybe. And that's the other thing too. We have not recorded Smashville yet, so for the listener, it might not be in your feed next week. Who knows? Dan and I might. Die on the way there. I pray. Then no episode. This episode won't come out. I don't know how to That's post true. it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so Bye, I guess everybody. good luck, listener. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is Stan's last last message to Eminem. Like, how the <laughs> fuck are we sending this out? Who knows? All right. We might you, end on the fanatic. Were you looking fuck up yeah. the the Jake Paul fight? Nah. Oh, okay. 
I was I seen it today on my thing, like Tyson to fight Jake Paul, and I was like, oh shit. And then I remembered Kron sent that thing, and I was like, oh yeah, out in the first round. Totally. You're not gonna watch this WrestleMania tag team with The Rock and Roman Reigns. Fuck no. Does Roman Reigns talk? I think that's part of the gimmick. I don't think him and Cody Rhodes talk he, much. I think he has a puppet that he talks through. <laughs> Paul Heyman. Because I, I remember, like, I see stuff, and I'm like, I don't ever see him, like, on the mic. Is he just that bad at mic? Probably. I feel like that's 95% of wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, you get Ric Flair in there. Yeah, he, 95% on the of mic. his wrestling was on the mic. Roman Reigns is, might be terrible on the mic, though. That, we're all saying the same thing right now. <laughs> Cody Rhodes has to win the title, though. Right? Because he didn't win it last time? I don't know. I don't even I don't know, know who... Either. I'm watching this through 30-second Instagram Things the next I'm day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Smashville next month. It's a big deal for us. Maybe there's two or three people out there that are excited. Probably the end of the show, too. I don't know. It'd be a good we'll way to go out. out. Yeah, I think so. We still got to do season two. I got so much. We could just post our we'll guys. just post our categories on the Discord and be done with it. <laughs> this is what we would have done. Yeah. That's what you could have had. Criterion. All right. Crash and burn. Crash and burn. Crash and burn. Crash and burn.